Thank you very much, Pastor Ladigbombe. Please be seated. <clears throat> Let me briefly start by asking if we all have invitation to this function. <laughs> well, I received my own invitation last month, July. And um, for a brief moment, I was reflective, thinking back that about the same time last year in July, I also got an invitation from the Grillo family. On that occasion, it was sent to me by Professor Yusuf Grillo himself. The invitation has at the top of it a subject written, OIC. And then, if you are familiar with Baba's invitation to functions in his house, under the OIC, you have a composition, a beautiful composition, written, reflecting on life, family, society, religion, faith. A beautiful composition, and at the end of it, you will have Y. Grillo signed at the base. That was July last year. <coughs> by July this year, we also received another invitation, but this time around it was sent by the children, our own brothers and sisters, Sister Morayo, um, Brother Goega, Brother Ladi, Sister Boduni, and Aki, inviting us to this event, which is the first year memorial of the passing of an icon a giant in the art world. My name is Boyega Ogunjemite. I'll be comparing this event along with Dr. Kunle Adeyemi and Dr. Adeola Balogun. In the course of this event, I will, I will invite the two of them to handle some aspects of the program. But to help us start properly, may I at this point respectfully invite um, Mrs. Morayo Grillo Antonio for our welcome address. <laughs> Sister Morayo, just a minute, just a minute. Settle down, sort out your papers. Let me take something else before you are ready. Whilst she's getting ready, I would love to bring on Dr. Kunle Adeyemi to introduce us to the discussants at this event. Thank you very much. Um, I want to appreciate God and uh, your presence here this morning, uh, particularly um, in this um, memorable event uh, for our father, um, an icon, a legend, an art tutor personnel, personified, and um, a giant in the visual art industry globally, Professor Yusuf Cameron Adebayo Grillo. Um, by this time last year, we were here on uh, the 40 days without prayer or something? Yes. It's eight days, okay. Uh, yes, that was uh, at the ceremonial level. Uh, but today, we are here at an intellectual level, discourse sessions on who, after all, we, we have actually uh, uh, slipped over it and um, we now want to know who this man is. And I know that there will be that agility to continue this, this course session from time to time. Grillo came, he saw, and he conquered. And that is why this presence, this meeting, this August occasion today, um, we have in our midst some eminent scholars, some friends, um, schoolmates, um, 
society mates of Professor Grillo are here. By the grace of God, they are still alive, some of them. And um, uh, I want to assure you that our daddy is here. And uh, by the time we call him, we will uh, give him that thunderous round of applause. I'm also um, that he is able to make it. It's just by grace. Um, quickly, uh, I, I would um, move it over to Odaru Koinsa. <laughs> pa T Timothy Adebanjo Pasui. Please a round of applause. A round of applause. By the way, Pa Fashuyi is an astute artist, an astute educator, a former director, Ministry of Education, Federal Ministry of Education. The founder, Tafas Gallery. Um, let me shock you, let me shock you, let me shock you. This is the man that had the distinction, that you call it distinction, you call it um, first class now. Yes, 19... 50, check in Kwebaba. <laughs> some of us were not born then. That's the first, some of the first set of the graduates of the Nigerian College of Art and Science, now Amadou Bello University. <laughs> Please, a round of applause, a round of applause. That merits them. They merit them. As a graduate of fine arts, Baba read painting, just like Professor Yusuf Grillo. He read painting, just like Yusuf Grillo. That is not Amar Gunke. One Amar Gunke. He said, One Amar Gunke. One Amar Gunke. Because uh, another engineer is going to join another older. Uh, please clap for him, clap for him. And what we are doing here now is actually uh, uh, streamed live globally. Right now, people are tuning in from the United States of America, from UK, from some other parts of the world. Erasa. Agbara. Sisa. Thank you, thank you. And um, another very special guest um, that I will call now is actually in that ring too. I wouldn't know whether you will sit down or whether you will stand up, but let me call him first. He's another uh, octogenarian or septu, whatever. Um, pa, engineer, Akin Tola Ajayi. Please clap for daddy. That's another legend. Some of these people are Professor Yusuf Grillo's mates. Yes. And I'm happy to hear today that they are done this event. For the organizers to have moved this mountain to this place, we say kudos. Thank you so very much. Please clap for daddy again. Engineer Akintola Ajayi. I'll quickly move into, please sit down. Yes, we have, um, we have our rector here. The rector of the College of Technology. Uh, that is where daddy spent his lifetime. As soon as he joined the session, I think in 1962 or thereabouts, till he retired, he never wavered. 
He didn't look left. He didn't look right. And he was so much sought for all over the world. Possibly, if it were to be people like us today, we put one leg in Massachusetts, we put another one in, <laughs> in Texas, we put another one looking for the dollars. But this man waited and he nurtured that art school to its greatness. Please, a round of applause for Professor Gulo. Yes. Some of the products of Grillo, some of the products of that art school today, any one of them that, were, that, was, that was there during uh, when Professor Gillo was around, we we'll always reference him. As a matter of fact, some of those who he gave birth to, not biological now, professional. Please don't uh, <laughs> Some of us that he gave birth to, you know, uh, professionally, have given back to some other series of artists. Those ones have given back to another mm -hmm. level and series of other artists. Please, a round of applause for this man. <laughs> Yusuf Adebayo Cameron Grillo. Now, it was in that institution all true. And uh, we're calling on the head of that institution right here, who is ably represented by the Deputy yeah. Rector of Academics, um, the rector is unavoidably absent, but the deputy, high-powered deputy rector of academics is here. I want to call on our mommy, Dr. Mrs. Ukamba, Dr. Mrs. Titila Yokaba. Please come over, ma. Come over, ma. Please clap, clap, clap. Yeah, bow. <laughs> Dr. Mrs. Ukamba. Um. Allow them. Allow them. You're welcome, man. I'm expecting one, Mrs. Alaba Fagun. Alaba Fagun for 12. Miss. Please have your seat. Quickly, I'll move to another discussant. And as they come, we'll bring them up stage. As a matter of fact, by the time they are opening uh, their discourse session, We'll just do a brief intro so that you know the caliber and the quality of the people that we have actually brought in here. I think you can't get it better anywhere. This is the right place. Thank you so much, Grillo Art Limited. We want to appreciate you for this. Um, I would quickly bring up another elder in the arts profession, uh, taught by Grillo. He's taught other people. And those people are even doing better in the art world. And so Grillo has several grandsons and daughters. I want to call on our daddy, the sculptor of our time, the stained glass artist. All those things I got him from Grillo, don't mind that so. The mural decorator, and so many of those things. Bernard, I know. Sir, oh, sir, 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 Bernard, I know. <laughs> Recently, quietly, Oga just clocked 70, and he did it quietly. He just clocked 70, and he did it quietly. A retired school administrator, a retired artist, a retired art lecturer, um, we appreciate you, sir. Again, uh, the, um, also one of the sons of Grillo that have gone into other areas of um, endeavor, still in the arts though, as administrator, visual artist, art historian, and whatever you want to say in the arts, he is there. Please join me in welcoming Pam Adileye Makanju. <laughs> He's an art scholar, a long-time chief lecturer, a sport administrator, and uh, an art historian of notes. 
Adeleye Makanju. Also a product of Grillo School. So you welcome, gentlemen. Uh, quickly, I will um, recognize Odu Odimalade, doctor, who is one of our rapporteurs here. He is one of our rapporteurs here, and uh, Dr. Kennedy Adepegba. I want you people, the two of you, should please should be in one place so that you can cross-check things and all that stuff. The two some should be in one place. Uh, Odu Odimalade and Kennedy Adepegba. Uh, they are going to one of those things that I should be done here will be quickly put together. Uh, let me assure you that there are some journalists in our midst. And we have all of them. We have some of them here. And so all this that we do today will actually be in the pages or gloss the pages of our papers as soon as possible. So it will be an information that will be viral. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Odiemi. If you look at the area of discussion that we have here, these are not the only discussion that are going to talk today. We have someone that will be speaking from America, virtual. And uh, in fact, we have about 30 people, virtual. It's a wonderful thing for the Grillo family to have assembled these great people, art historians, professional artists, people of the academics. I think it's a beautiful way to celebrate the one year passing of Professor Y.A. Grillo. Let's have another round of applause for that. <laughs> Briefly, I will have to invite Dr. Adiola Balogun to come and take recognition of some of the VIPs that we have in the house, Dr. Balogun. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, all the duly observed, um, we have um, very important personalities among us this morning, and it's important for us to recognize that. Um, to let you know, the theme of this particular talk is um, the man the message and the myth. So it's important for us to um, let us um, get to know ourselves, and I want to quickly do that. But before I want to do that, I, I mean, when I got the invitation for this particular program, I started wondering because. Um, Professor Yusuf Cameron Grillo. Uh, permit me, we, in Yaba Tech, we call him Baba. Baba Grillo, that is what we call him. So don't mind me when I keep on referring, saying Baba, Baba. Uh, when, we, when I got the invitation to be part of this event, uh, what actually crossed my mind was, um, uh, yes, Baba is no more. Would Baba, uh, would, would he have allowed this to take place? Because um, why did I ask that question? Years ago when Baba was about to click, her, uh, I mean, clock 70, uh, in Yaba Tech, we were, you know, preparing mightily for this particular uh, uh, birthday. But um, we invited, you know, all Yaba uh, alumni in diaspora, everywhere, to be part of that event. We plan it big. But um, by the time we send delegate to Baba, <laughs> Baba just smiled and told us to actually sheet our sword because he's, he wouldn't allow that to happen. He would prefer to actually celebrate his birthday quietly. And... Uh, we couldn't believe it, right? And um, permit me to read 
a, there, there was a message, a note to one of his, um, to one of us then that were preparing for that particular program. Permit me to read from that note. I owe all of you an apology for what might have appeared to some as spoiled sport in bracket. I mean, in quote. Sport, sport, attitude to the event. You all must, of course, have already known that I am an irredeemable introvert. The years have succeeded in hardening me further to shun the spotlight. Some of you have known for years that I do not celebrate my birthday. How can I claim credit for it? Of course, on daily basis, celebrate the creator, worship and thank him for my life and the immense blessing he has been showering on me. End of quote. It's Baba for you, right? But with what we're doing today, Baba is no more. In spirit, he's with us. And definitely, he would have approved of what we're doing today. So once again, I want to welcome you all to this particular event and to further recognize some important personality amongst us. And um, yeah, Baba was um, the founder of um, Society of Nigerian Artists, SNA, and um, is still doing well, still waxing stronger. And um, for Lagos ch chapter, we have the chairman with us. That is uh, Mr. Kola Wale Olojo Kusoko. Mr. Kusoko, <clears throat> you're welcome. Also in our midst, we have, uh, like it's been um, announced here, yeah. high power, right? So in our midst, we have, uh, we call him Otumba, Mr. Tony Anthony Ogunde. You're welcome. Uh, Dr. Alade Bongwe, I mean, he was one that the uh, prayer. He's still in our midst. Dr. Alade Bongwe. <laughs> so, we have uh, uh, Irukano, Irukano La Iman. <laughs> As we roll along, certainly other important personalities will be announced. But, um, Yes, before I hand over the mic, I think it's important for me to also recognize a very important person here. He happens to be the shadow, for, uh, a shadow friend of Baba Grilu. That is Pa Bode Emmanuel. Sir, you're welcome, sir. He was the chairman, he's the chairman, no prono, chairman PGH Construction, the company that constructed the third Milan. Sir, you're welcome. Also in our midst, we have Pai Justice, Justin Olabode Emmanuel. He's an art patron. He's also a childhood friend of Baba. You're welcome, sir. He's a chartered accountant and a successful business businessman. He's a board of uh, director of uh, many companies. Sir, you are welcome. So at this stage, I think um, I want to hand over the mic for the proper program to you know. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much. I think that recognition will not be complete if we don't mention that uh, Pam Makonju came along with his beautiful wife. Madam, we recognize you. <laughs> Mrs. Makonju, stand up for recognition. And then also my humble self, I'm here with my wife. <laughs> and you have, to, you have to recognize Mrs. Susan Ogun Jemite. 
who was also one time chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of SNA. You are welcome, Mrs. Susan. <laughs> Quickly, I just want us to know that um, some people are joining us online. We are already booked online. Uh, we have Professor Deli Jagede from the United States of America. He's online right now. As a matter of fact, he's one of the discussants in this session. I have Professor Jerry Buhari. He's actually online. Uh, he's joining us in this discourse session. Uh, we have Dr. Koladi Oshinawa. He's online. He's also joining us in this discussion. Uh, we have Tony Akinosho and also German Akinikula Kokuti. Uh, they are all online uh, for this discourse session. Thank you. Okay, we are moving on. Before we go into the business of the day, which is the discussion proper, I think we are now set to invite Mrs. Morayo Gelo Antonio to come and deliver a welcome speech. I think you should you, you also do well if you introduce us to the members of the Gelo family. Good morning, or is it afternoon? It's afternoon now. Um, my our special guests of honor are revered elders and the masters of masters here present are valued patrons of the art, gentlemen of the press and media houses and distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the art community. It gives us great pleasure to welcome you here today to the first ever event hosted by Grillo Art Limited. Now, Grillo Art Limited was born out of the realization, sudden realization for us, of the magnitude and the worth of the work that Yusuf Grillo undertook in his lifetime. And in that realization, we took it for granted while he was with us, didn't really pay too much mind. But when he left, it dawned on us that <laughs> this man was really much more than just daddy, which he was to us. So there's a need for us as his posterity to ensure that the labors of this particular hero shall not be in vain. And so Grillo Art Limited was born. And in our current national environment, where the insane drive for amassing illicit personal wealth has eroded almost all the noble values of civilized society, Grillo Art is an attempt to preserve an oasis of sanity in the midst of the chaos. We have chosen to preserve part of our shared history by embarking on the Grillo, Yusuf Grillo Memorial Museum project. This project aims to preserve the workspace of our late father, which was attached to his residence, as an exhibit and a resource center for artists of this generation and for generations to come. So help us God. <laughs> the plan is to open up the structure that used to house his um, studio, workshop, and office to the public. The structure is to be remodeled to incorporate a museum to exhibit the artist's personal art collection and some of the artifacts from his life for field trips to schools and institutions and for art tourism in general. It will also house a library and a resource center for the research, for research by students of fine art. So they'll be welcome to come in, read the books. He has a lot of them for, for their research, yeah. 
I also house um, small modest gallery spaces for small exhibitions and modest meeting rooms, all for the use of the art community. The Memorial Museum is being designed and remodeled by no other than the master art space creator. He's not here yet, but I expect he'll be joining us soon. He's the innovative and brilliant visionaire who has given us Freedom Park just down the road and also given us the Kalakuta Museum in Ikeja, the Kuti Heritage Museum in Abelkuta, and he's none other than architect Theo Lawson. He'll be joining us soon. Let's give him a round of applause. Grillo Art seeks to keep giving back to our communities on as many levels as we can and as much as we can through the promotion of the study and practice of fine art in the memory of our beloved father and for the benefit of humanity. On behalf of Grillo Arts Limited, we welcome you again to this debut event and eagerly look forward to an engaging learning experience at the feet of the masters assembled here, both physically and virtually. I thank you all for being here and bringing this vision to a reality. Thank you. But before I go, I was asked to um, introduce some, well, the members of the family um, gathered here. I have, I am Morayo Antonio, number one, and I have here my, my supportive husband, Rotimi Antonio, Engineer Rotimi Antonio. <laughs> and number two is Bodurin Adeyemi, my sister, ably supported by her husband, Barista Tunde Adeyemi. <laughs> Next comes Boega, who is so, oh, at the back there. Boega Grillo, followed by Ladi Grillo. His wife is here, Halima Grillo. And last but not the least, engineer Akinkumi Grillo. <laughs> and he's here with his wife, Zainab. Oh, she's over there. <laughs> so, and the grand, some of the grandchildren running around. Um, so that's Papa's family, as far as we know. <laughs> Thank you very much. A round of applause for Sister Morayo Antonio. Now, one thing. Um, hello. Sometimes um, when the icon or legend uh, is with us, possibly sometimes we do not know until maybe they are passed, they've passed on. Uh, quickly, I just want us to know that um, one of my colleagues here um, erroneously said Grillo was the founder of Society of Nigeria. No, but Grillo was actually the founding president of the Society of Nigerian Artists. Uh, please, um, apology for that, uh, because some of these things goes in, in history. Um, quickly, we would want to call the first, the first shot, um, and we are calling on no other person than Dr. Claudio Shinowo, uh, who uh, is going to join us right now um, uh, via Zoom. Um, the, you will see the talk and the pictures uh, vividly on our uh, visual images there. Now, Koladi Oshinawa was born in Ibadan in 1948, and he was is one of Nigeria's most respected artists, an influential art educator, and mentor to younger artists as well as a prolific painter. He has held numerous solo exhibitions and participated in over a hundred group shows 
Uh, he's um, had a very increasing, which means he's still going on, he's still ongoing, successful career in the visual arts. And of course, you know, just like uh, Professor Yusuf Grillo, uh, Kolade Oshinawa was actually picked up or was pushed by that same uh, Yusuf Grillo. Kolade was pushed and when he saw the elements, you know, of being a great artist and a good art educator in him from King's College. And so, Grillo, I mean, Kolade Oshinawa followed Yusuf Grillo to Yaba College of Tech and he spent his own energy in that same school. So join me right now um, uh, in welcoming, uh, listening to uh, Dr. Koladi Oshinawa's uh, piece on Yusuf Grillo, the man, the myth, and the message. Thank you very much.
sorry for that interjection or possibly um, an interlude or maybe a recess. However, we would quickly um, bring up Professor Dede Gede from the United States of America. He's actually online right now. And uh, are we having him, please? Professor Jagede online. Professor Jagede online. Dele Jagede. I think, uh, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we're trying to sort out the technical issues there, I uh, want to quickly go to the next, uh, I mean, we have uh, important uh, personalities around that are ready for us. So uh, we're going to have uh, Dr. Dunri to present Baba Fashi's, uh, Baba Fashi's uh, paper. Can we give her a round of applause? Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all protocols duly observed. Um, it's uh, an honor <laughs> to, to be here and to speak on behalf of Elder Timothy Adivangel Fasi Tafas, the doyen of Nigerian modern artists proprietor of Tafas Gallery, Badagri Street, Adeni Jones Ikeja. Um, just assume that I'm his avatar, so don't look at the little girl here. Uh, think of me as a charming, eloquent elder statesman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Professor Yusuf Adebayo Grillo, 1934 to 2021. The man the message, the myth. Of a Muslim parentage, Yusuf Adebayo Cameron Grillo was born in December 1934 at the Brazilian quarters of Lagos Island. He had his early education in Christian mission schools on the island and his secondary education at Lagos Anglican Grammar School, Bariga. There, he made many friends who later influenced his later life. The tenets of the two religions molded him for later years. His artistic talents manifested early, leading him to a quick choice of profession. He studied fine art, and by his hard work and destiny, he became a great and leading artist of his time. I first met Yusuf in 1956. I first met Yusuf in 1956. When he came to join us at the defunct Nigerian College of Art, Science and Technology, NCAST. The college was the first uh, tertiary institution to offer formal art education leading to a university degree in Nigeria. 
the college started at, at Zaria in 1955, uh, 1956 session. I was one of the first set and Grillo was one of the second set. While Bruce Onobra Choir was the third set in 1957-58. At the college, there were three specializations, which are uh, painting, sculpture, and graphic design. Coincidentally, the three of us named above were in the painting section. In his first year in the college, Yusuf Grillo showed excellence in landscape painting and drawing. I was interested in pictorial composition. Bruce specialized in painting and printing. We all interacted peacefully with other students from different parts of the country, doing art and other professional courses, including engineering and architecture. Yusuf Grillo had taken some informal part-time courses in art before coming to Zaria, so it was easy and quick for him to shine amongst his classmates. And because of his physique, he, easily, he was easily recognized amongst a crowd. He was tall, lanky, and handsome. He was elected the secretary of the Art Students Association for the 1956-57 session. At the end of the year, we all departed Zaria for holidays in our different regions. When returning for the following sessions, many students from the West and Lagos traveled by train. The train had an accident at Lalupon near Ibadan. Many students died and many were injured. Yusuf was in the latter group. He sustained injuries on his head and legs and was hospitalized like others at the General Hospital Zaria. We visited him there. My visits to the hospital drew me nearer to Yusuf and inspired my first oil painting in the college. I did a painting of Yusuf in bandages in 1958 and the painting is still in my gallery till today. I showed it to Grillo's daughters when they visited me last week. When he came back to school, Yusuf had become emotionally strengthened, religiously and spiritually hardened. He concentrated on his work and did well in his second year intermedi intermediate examination. He successfully completed the final examination in 1960. We had expected that he would make a first class as I did, but his health was a handicap. In 1961, the two of us met again in Lagos, and we were employed by the Federal Ministry of Education. He was posted to the Yaba College of Technology, while I was deployed to King's College, Lagos. Bruce Sonabraquire, who graduated later, joined us in Lagos and taught at the St. Gregory's College, Lagos. The three of us had become the founding force leading to the formation of the Society of Nigerian Artists in 1964. Yusuf became the president, I was the secretary, while Onabrakwe was the financial secretary. In our different ways, we all developed our professional practice holding exhibitions from time to time and participating in other programs in Nigeria and abroad. Yusuf Grillo got a lot of commissions, especially window glass decorations in churches. His early Christian education enabled him to depict aspects of the Bible for his works. At the Yaba College of Technology, Yusuf was the head of department and was instrumental to the development of the department in the School of Art. Oh, sorry, let me take that again, please. He was instrumental to the development of the, part of the department into a school of art. Many competent painters and sculptors had been turned out of YCT, which is now the model art school in Nigeria. Some people even call it Slade Art School of Nigeria. 
He acted as the rector of the college during which time he got the Grillo Art Complex built. Before ev evaluating the man, Yusuf Grillo, further, it is necess necessary to know the physical and social cultural environment, uh, environment of his time. For my knowledge of him, Yusuf lived in three places in his lifetime. He spent his earlier years with his parents at 32, Inobere. Inobere. All right. <laughs> Inobere Street, Lagos. He went briefly to Zaria to undertake his art course, and when he came back, he lived at quarter, quarter 20 and later 21 of the Yaba College of Technology staff quarters for many years until he retired and moved to his personal house at 28 Ogunlowo Street, Ikeja, where he lived till he died. A review of the Yaba situation may therefore help us to understand him more. Yaba was an outskirt of Lagos Island and a, formid a formidable hobnob of activities. People living there were mainly non-Lagosian and they interacted peace peacefully with indigents. Grillo's residence became a center of many social activities, parties and get-togethers. <laughs> there was enough place for dancing and merrymaking with plenty to eat and drink, usually financed by Grillo himself. Nightlife was very exciting at many hotels. There was peace and security, making it possible to return home even after 12 midnight on Saturdays, which was usually the day the youths went to Kakadu Hotel and other such nightclubs. Returning with a copy of Sunday Times and a popular newspaper at the time, Yusuf Grillo was generous to his friends, the teachers and workers with him, and he gave grants to the needy who wanted to pursue their education, which made him popular with everybody. Grillo was hardworking and industrious, leading to a very flourishing, uh, flourishing professional practice. He made a lot of money from the sales of his artworks and the proceeds of his commissions. I'm mentioning all this to educate the young and upcoming artists that we need to supplement our talents with hard work to reach the top. Yusuf Grillo was also lucky to benefit from the facilities and opportunities of his environment. At YCT, that's the Yaba College of Technology, art materials were ordered from the manufacturers who delivered through the coastal agency promptly without custom duties. This made art materials cheap and readily available to the students and teachers. Outside the college, other artists purchased their materials from traders at higher prices. Yusuf Grillo's residential quarters had a big parcel of land around it. This allowed the creation of art studio and workshop within his home, and a, an opportunity that other artists didn't have. Most of them rented flats within houses and shared the surrounding land with other tenants who would not allow them to establish a studio workshop. The Yaba College of Technology Art Department was a popular center for tourists and art collectors, which fostered sales and collection of works from both staff and students. The foreign diplomatic missions, whose officers, officers were based in Lagos at the time, helped to exhibit the works of the artists, and YTC was a convenient contact point. Grillo lived in his quarters, which was a walking distance to his office. He didn't suffer the traffic pains and trauma of living in Yaba and working in Lagos as other artists like me did at the time. So one can see that Grillo was very lucky to have these opportunities. He had a convenient studio. He had ample time and a ready market to make him great and famous in his arts practice. Nobody was there for surprise when one of his works uh, was sold for 860,000 pounds at a recent international auction in London. Another artist whose work also hit the jackpot was Benu Wowu, whose work was sold for $1.4 million. Grillo played a, 
leadership roles of SNA in 1964 and remained in office for 15 years, considered as rather long. It is, however, heartening that the SNA changes its leadership every two years like other profession, professional organizations like the NBA and the NMA. In addition to being a founding member of the society, Grillo became the charter president. Along the line, he founded the Federal Society of Arts and Humanities. Grillo was the secretary of that society, and Mrs. Majie Kodumi was president with a very strong connection to the Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa. The Federal Society of Arts and Humanities got annual subvention to build a gallery of modern art from the federal government, toward which they collected some works, some works in the name of the society and kept them temporarily at the foyer of the University of Lagos. Other members of the, site, of the society were Grillo's non-artist friends from his secondary school. So with the increased responsibilities of two societies, Grillo became divided in his loyalty, but he still managed to give leadership to the SNA. At Festac 77, the SNA was the official contact for Nigeria, partic uh, Nigeria's participation in the arts program. his family. After the usual rascality of young men, uh, Professor Yusuf Grillo got married and settled down with his lovely wife, Yabo Oki, and they had five beautiful and successful children and grandchildren. His wife was a highly positioned civil servant with faithful support for her husband, his friends. Outside the YCT, Yusuf Grillo established very cordial relationships with his friends who were artists, engineers, and architects that he met in Zarian and others, including those from his childhood, neighborhood, and secondary school. And he formed what he called the Organization of Islamic Christians, OIC. At a time when Nigeria was contemplating joining the Organization of Islamic Countries, IOC, Yusuf hosted the club lavishly at his Ilea parties. For members of the association who were Christians and Muslims, but moved together peacefully regardless of their religions, Yusuf Grillo used his invitation cards for these annual parties to preach his message to his friends. There were, there were quotations of the Bible and the Quran in his messages of love and goodwill to all men. Quoted uh, part of his 2019 message titled, Walking with God. All creation by God was in, in those first six days millennia, everything was perfect. Everything was in the light. The human being, you and I, was formed out of dust in darkness after the seventh day. Falsely, euphemistically, we call the flesh of the, t the, flesh, the temple of, of the spirit of God. The fact, however, is that the flesh was formed to drag down the spirit man created by God. The spirit man in us is constant and perfect, but the bundle of darkness, our flesh, is so variable. Good balance gets continually destroyed, and God is compelled to intervene. He sent his commandments, his words, his prophets, his messengers, and his manifestations to keep us on the right path. He sent the great flood, Sodom and Gomorrah's fire, the confusion of the tongues at Babel, pla plagues, epidemics, pandemics, to drag us all back to the light. Yusuf Grillo, in his 2020 last message to the OIC, he says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 2,000 years after, it is is it not obvious that we still have not learned from the first thing about love and the fear of God, doing good to others? 
and doing to others as we will have them do unto us. Are you confident enough now to jump into your car and drive from Lagos to Benin <laughs> as we celebrate the great, the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ? May God in his infinite mercy forgive us and help us to learn and know what we do. Have a rewarding Easter, Yusuf Grillo. From the above message, Grillo would be seen as a man of God in his own right. He was a gentle and pleasant man, usually slow and calculating in his speech, slow to anger always, concerned for the welfare and progress of the underprivileged around him. He was a man of peace, love, and goodwill. He loved his friends and members of the society and was generous to them at times of need. When I celebrated my 70th birthday at Elisha, my hometown, it's my hometown too, Yusuf Grillo was there with his generous gifts and he shared the joys of the day with me. He was generous to other friends on similar occasions. He practiced his profession till he died a year ago. May his gentle soul continue to rest in perfect peace. May Allah grant him Al Janad Firados. Elder A. T. Thank you. Can we have another round of applause for Pa Fashi? Is there anyone here who is uh, disappointed by that presentation? I doubt it. I was not expecting anything less. It can only come from Pa Fashi. Somebody who was that close to Professor Grillo when he was alive. They started together. You heard it all from Zaria to SNA to their career life. And family, they were together. Thank you very much, sir. I want to plead on behalf of the students and scholars who are here that you make available to us a copy of that presentation. It will enrich their library. Daddy, we will want a copy of that presentation so that we can make copies for the students and scholars who are in the house. Um, I have been told that um, the audiovisual people are now ready for the presentation by Kolade Oshinowo. But before he does that, let me invite uh, Dr. Balogun to come and take some more recognition of VIPs who have arrived since we started. Thank you very much. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as her um, Papa Fayou's uh, paper was going on, um, we, had, we have some eminent personalities that worked into this uh, August occasion. And um, the first that I want to recognize here is, um, he, needs, he actually needs no introduction. Uh, when you're talking about um, the biggest art collector, I mean art collection in Nigeria, it belongs to him. He's also the founder of the first private museum in Nigeria. I'm talking of no other person than Omoba Yemisi Shilon. How are you doing? You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Also in our midst, just joining us, we've actually been expecting you, sir. He's uh, an educator, he's an erudite scholar. I think uh, very soon we're also going to have something similar to this uh, for him because uh, there's a, an event that is cooking. I'm talking about, he's a brother, Dr. Olakunle Filani. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can we have you at the uh, podium, sir? We also have in our midst here a retired DIG, 
He's a cousin to Pa Grillo. I'm talking about Retardi IG Kazim. Can we put our hands together for him? You're welcome, sir. Yeah, like I told you earlier on, we had a high power delegation from Yaba Tech. And um, we have some of our lecturers too, uh, which I want to recognize. Uh, Mr. Fatah Abdukari is a lecturer at Yaba College of Technology. Also, Mr. Ekwe Young, you're welcome. My student, you've been quiet for some time. Can you give yourself three gozas? Goza, goza, goza. have uh, the founder of um, and the proprietor of, of Aladire Designs in person of Mrs. Bumi Davies. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'll be handing over the mic to Mr. Ogunjemite for the next presentation. Thank you. Are we ready for Koladi Oshinawa's presentation? Professor Yusuf Cameron Grillo was like a father to, to me personally. I got to hear about him uh, way back in, in 1969-70. We had some of the new entrants uh, who were in the 100 Hundred level coming at the time, and uh, most of them had attended Yaba College of Technology, where Yusuf Grillo was the head of the department. And the way they would talk about Grillo was like talking about um, an angel or a superman. No sentence was complete without their mentioning Grillo. And <laughs> I became, I became curious. Uh, one of them, incidentally, was my late wife, you know, Agwala Johnson, uh, who was like a daughter to him. He, you know, we always talk about, oh, how Gilo will ask you, you know, to do the drawing or do the painting. So I said, hey, it's okay. Uh, one day I will get to meet, I will get to meet Grillo and. Um, Fast forward, I met Grillo. And when I met Grillo, uh, it was as though all they were talking about uh, were kind of watered down. Because I really, I got to know him, and uh, I said, uh, yes, they, they talked about him in, in a nice way, but you know, what did, talked about was uh, or not what I'm seeing. He was, he was, uh, he was something else. And um, it was as though I was destined to meet Grillo. And um, when I got to King's College, like he was also at King's College, uh, I was, you know, relaxed doing my work. I never thought about SNE at the time. But I was thinking of it. I had heard about Society of Nigerian Artists. And um, the first exhibition I had in Lagos, that was in 1972, barely two, three months after graduation, was courtesy of Grillo. Because I met him and I just said, I would like to have an exhibition with the Society of Nigerian Artists. I was not sure. I had done my rehearsal about how to approach him. But 
I was so stunned and surprised that um, he didn't even think twice about it. He said, ah, Kolari, you are welcome. Um, yes, 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 you can, you can, you can join, you can join the exhibition. Um, the exhibition was the Independence, Nigeria Independence uh, Exhibition at the, uh, not at Valley at the time, it was at the race course, the Senate building. And uh, he, he said, to my surprise, I was, going, I was expecting him to say, oh, uh, submit a work. But he said, bring four works. Wow, four works, I was so ecstatic. And for me, that exhibition was a major break. Because at the exhibition, the four works were sold. And people were wondering, who is this? Who is this strange? Who is this person? And they will say, is that the person? From then, it was, uh, it was as though we were bonded. You know, he was focusing on me, I was focusing on him. Uh, I didn't know whose focus was stronger, but he, Professor Grillo allowed me as a young man to stand on his shoulders to be able to see clearly into the horizon. He didn't deny me anything. You know, he was looking for my, my welfare, my goodwill. If I needed anything, it was him. You know, so King's College, I was doing my work and um, I had done SNA after the exhibition. And he said, Kolari, ah, I want you to join us at Yabatek. Eh? I said, Yabatek, okay, sir. So I looked at I said, Yabatek. I was enjoying myself at King's College. There was the possibilities of travels and so on. I ignored the, <laughs> I, ignored, I ignored the advert. I didn't, I didn't go because I felt I needed to stay at King's College. So the next SNA meeting, he saw me and he said, you didn't honor the invitation. Uh, I couldn't give any plausible answer. And he said, no, you, you should give it, give it a thought. And I gave it a thought, you know, and uh, there was an advert again. And of course, before then he said, okay, before you join us, look at your, look at your timetable. Is there any particular day in which you'll be free so that you can come and do something for us at the apartheid? So I looked through and Tuesday, was free, and I said, I'll be free on Tuesday. He said, okay, come on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I was in Yabatek. That was how I started teaching pictorial composition in Yabatek on Tuesday. And of course, that led to my joining Yabatek eventually in 1974. That subject I taught on Tuesdays till I retired. Anytime they are going to prepare the timetable, Tuesday's pictorial composition, they just leave it <laughs> for me, you know. So it, 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 my relationship with him, he told a story during the Grillo Pavilion that uh, he, he, he had had to carry a sacrifice. You know, you know when you say you want to be a boy, he said he had to carry sacrifice you know, to the junction to, con to consult the oracle to get me to join them at Yabatek, you, you, you know. But then I joined Yabatek and um, the story changed, you know, because it was from one event to the other, you know. Um, he was the head of department I was a secretary. He was president of uh, Society of Nigerian Artists. I became assistant secretary, and in, in 1975, I became the secretary. And I worked with him very closely. 
you know, until when we left office in 1980. So when you, the relationship I had, I have had with him, um, is more than a father and a son. You know, when people wanted anything from him, there was a time some people were trying to acquire his work. They would tell themselves, go and meet Kolade. He's the only one that you think Grillo will listen to. You know, if they wanted anything at all, because he was not disposed to publicity. He was, he was, I won't say he, he was a recluse, but he was very jealous of his time. And he didn't want to be disturbed at all, you know? So they know that if, if I go to him, the door will open, <laughs> you know? I didn't abuse it, by the way. Um, anytime I call him, oh, you just say, ah, so how is it? And we will talk, we will share jokes. I traveled with him extensively, you know, in the country, outside the country. And um, some of those rare co qualities of him are imbibed and absorbed. Uh, he, he didn't have time for lazy people. I remember that I approached him once that why is it that uh, there was a gentleman in Yabatek at the time, Paul Ibanugo. We, we went to him, why is it that he's the two of us that he will always give assignments, you know? Paul said, ah, this is too much now. So, so, and so is that. So, so, and so is that. And we went to him. Like Grillo said, you know, when you get to my position, you will understand. Nobody wants to give an assignment and continue to look over his shoulders to see whether it is being done. And if that assignment fails, that it is with him. So you rather give it to somebody who will at least do the job while you are asleep. You know, he, those things he did, you know, especially in the School of Art, in Yabatek, he, there is no way they will forget him because he fought and I joined him in the fight. He fought to establish that school to that extent fighting for courses like fashion design, fighting to have a purpose-built uh, building for the School of Art. It wasn't fun because at the time we were occupying virtually a room in every building with studios. And students would carry their easels, you know, and go and block roads and offices and they say, ah, this is too much. Let's put these people in one place so that they can manage themselves there. So we had the, we had the school, the school of arts. Um, it's, it's important, you know, to know that Mr. Grillo didn't like hugging the limelight. In fact, he will walk, rather walk away from it. He didn't like unusual exposure. Some people like it. That's why you will have to convince him and persuade him that this thing is, is, is important, you know, that it should, it won't take time. You have to have a way. I know how I talk. I talked with him. I would say, okay, call it if you say so. You know, some people were going to do a documentary and they couldn't approach him. And they said, well, I didn't help us talk to this man. It's only you, you know. So I talked with him and he said, are you sure about this? I said, yes, 
it won't take time. They will be here at a particular time. You know, they will be very time conscious. Say, okay, fine. Only for the videographer, the person who was going to go, to go and tell Yusuf Grillo that he shouldn't wear white. So Yusuf Grillo called me to say that, you know, the, the appointment was, was canceled. How can you wear, how can you talk to a man? Since the first day I met him, till the last day it was white. Even in his studio, it was white. You now go and tell the man, uh, you have to wear color photo friendly. So I had to appeal to him. Please sir, wear white. In fact, the most annoying white that you have, just wear it. They, they will come, please. So that's the type of person, you, you know. You, you, you have to, you, you have to, you know, sometimes you travel and they tell you, ah, is Grillo still there? And I say, yes. That, that's my boy, yes. I say, ah, I met him. They will start, start telling you stories about what he did for them, about what they benefited. You know, he, a lot of people benefited from him because he was a very selfless man in helping people. You know, when you, when you approach him, once he's able to evaluate your needs, he says you should go, you know. So some of us are still dealing with the trauma of his passing. I am still, it's gonna be one year, but I'm still dealing with it because I'm used to calling him and talking. I'm used to asking him questions. You know, I'm used to just knowing that he is there, you know, and I must tell you, he rendered service to humanity. He rendered service to Nigeria. He did a when I see people being given ON and COF, and I say there is one person, I know probably he's been approached. He never liked something like that. He will just tell the other people less, <laughs> you know. But he he paid his dues. And I am glad that even in death he's still being celebrated. You know, he was a wonderful family man, took care of, you know, his home and his children. He never forgot them, you know. Um, I can remember us during the layer trooping, you know, to his house when he was uh, in Yabatek or when he was in Ogunlowo Street, you know, organization of Islamic Christians. It was a meeting point, you know, where you have conversations, Muslim or Christian. You know. By the way, he was well versed in the Bible and he handled a lot of commissions that were Bible-based. So he did a lot of research. Uh, I can talk about him forever, but he lives in our hearts and we thank God for that. You know, we, I, when you say somebody, he might have his flaws, but I don't, I don't think I have one. Because he was, he was a gentleman to the core, somebody you would look up to, you know, and I'm glad that I'm being given this opportunity by the children uh, to say a few words. I had one Moriah that if I begin to talk about Grillo, if you give me the microphone, he will be begging me to relinquish the microphone because I have so much to talk about. Even now, there are some areas I have not touched, but I know that, uh, well, he is, uh, he is watching wherever he, he has done his bit. He did very well in terms of, you know, studio practice. Um, 
I mean, <laughs> the CV is there to show everybody. Whether it's commission, whether it's uh, easel painting, and, and his works commanded so much, you know, in terms of price. Uh, there was a time I went to him that I wanted his painting. And at the time, the, the, the studio was a bit empty. And he said, eh, you, you, are just <laughs> you are just waking up. When you exhibit, Grillo will come and at least buy a painting. He was like that. He encouraged all of us. And so you find a whole body, an army of Nigerians who are admir admirers of Yusuf Grillo. There are many. Everybody having a testimony. He did this for me, he did that for me, he did that, you know. Um, we thank God. We thank God. I'm so glad to be given the opportunity. Thank you very much. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Once again, vintage Oshino. You can see that it is getting better and better. Is it not? I, I will want the tempo to continue so that we don't waste time as I call on Pam Makoju to deliver his own paper. Sorry, sorry, sir. Before you do that, sir, let me quickly, there's need for us to recognize the presence of some important personalities in our midst. Um, quickly, I want to recognize the presence of uh, architect Folaho Olumide, Principal Folio Design and Development. <laughs> sir, you're welcome. Well, and I want to really want to thank you for coming around the other time for the Grillo installation we had in Yabatek. Thank you for coming around. Uh, we also have in the house, uh, like we already, t already told, uh, we have a Grillo Memorial Museum coming up. The designer is here, and that is architect Theo Lawson. <laughs> architect Theo Lawson. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming around. And we also have in our midst Chief Mrs. Oyeyemi Banjoku. Thank you for coming around. Um, we also have in our midst Elder Ralph Thompson. Thank you for, thank you for being around. And uh, we have uh, Madam Adekumbi Grillo as well. Uh, um, Madam Adetoro Grillo, Ma, thank you for coming around last year when we had, um, this year, when we had a Grillo uh, installation in Yabatek. She was very, very much in support of that. Thank you for coming around, Ma. And we have uh, Chief Mrs. Oyeyemi Banjoko, a former staff in Yabatek Technology. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, ma'am. So at this stage, I think we'll be handing over the microphone to um, Adelaide Pam Makoju. He's a professional artist that is interested in sharing his experience with young men, thereby guiding them to foster pitfalls. A chief lecturer at the Lagos State Polytechnic, Ikodu, now Lagos State University of Science and Technology. Prof. <laughs> well, Adile Makanju actually as a product of the Grillo School, Faculty of Technology, before he moved to uh, the University of Benin and later University of Ibadan for all his Ngbangba degrees. Uh, he's a sculptor, an, art, an, an African art historian. Uh, he has actually headed so many of those units at the Lagos Polytechnic, the defunct Lagos Polytechnic. At a particular time, he was the Dean School of Environmental Studies and presently the Director uh, Sports. Adile Makanju is, has written several uh, papers in academy, recognized academic journals. He has exhibited his works widely, and uh, he's still kicking well. He's actually here with his amiable wife, uh, 
the lawyer. <laughs> Adile Makaji, please get out and uh, do the this. Well, standing on existing protocol, I want to, if there should be a title, I'll put the paper as um, Yusuf Adebayo Grillo, Politics and Power Play in the Art Kingdom. It is a mundane tax. When someone is salute to talk or write about one's professional grandfather, I perceive what she know as my father and Grillo, a grandfather in the field of arts. You will think of what to write for someone who has transversed beyond the cocoon of art to become not just an administrator, but a one-time acting registrar, vice rector, director of school, head of the department of the institution, I need to do him justice. Let me give you a little background of myself and why the tax is so enormous. I missed the opportunity to express my thoughts during Yusuf Grillo's 17th birthday because it, it never But I thank God I'm able to pay my debt today. Preamble. I was exposed to find that at Christ School at Wikiti. Having been taught, having been taught by Victor A. Daramola, an alumni of Amadou Bello University. Moving with my parents to Ondo as a young boy, I was determined to study fine arts in a higher institution and make a living out of it. However, there was a death of qualified art teachers in Ondo schools in those days. So we were taught by not two school artists who never himself wrote the school certificate. He learned the trade from a private studio in Ibadan. He gave us practical knowledge of how to prepare for the examination that's the West African School Certificate Examination, and we passed. You will be surprised that somebody who did not have a formal education was our tutor. For the WAIC examination, we took paper one. For those of you who will know, still life drawing, paper two, nature drawing, and paper three, imaginative composition. While we're still seeking for admission, into a higher institution to pursue our dreams. In 1978, the federal government of Nigeria established the Joint Admission, uh, joint admission Matriculation Board, JAM, to conduct, examine, and select students for admission into Nigeria University. The examination was a theory base. A syllabus was released, and there were subject combinations you must write in the examination to qualify for admission. Intending artists were to sit for four papers, which must include English language, fine arts, and two other subjects from either the arts or social science subjects. Until then, we never knew any literature exist on art. We thought art was all drawings. This new face was far, far beyond the comprehension of our tutor. So we started looking for It was in my search that I met with Dr. Kunle Adeyemi, an intending applicant, who later introduced me to Ogunjobi, a junior brother to the late Ebola Ogunjobi, who died in a motor accident when the Western troop were going to Zaria for the Nigerian Festival of Arts. He was then a part three student at an academic club of education. Mr. Gunjobi took us to the library, that's the uh, academic club of education library, and brought out books that captured the syllabus. Some of the books were African art 
the year since 1920s, written by Masha Wardmont, African Nat, written by Frank Willett, and then the story of art. Reading Masha Man book, I came across names like Uche Okeke, Simeon Okeke, Somolowang Boje, Yusuf Adebayo Grillo, Demasun Woko, Kola Shinowo, from the Zarian School, and from the Oshogwa Enclave, names like 277, Muran Naoyelamin, Susan Wenja, and Jim O'Brien. As a young man, these names sounded like people from outer space or Alice in Wonderland books. The world was not yet a global village with information flying everywhere. Eventually, on the 2nd of October, 1978, I was admitted into Yaba College of Technology in Yaba to study general arts. My first job came during the live drawing class when the lecturer, the same Dr. Kolade Oshinawa, entered the class and introduced himself. For those names belong to people with flesh, so those names belong to people with flesh and blood, and blood flowing in their veins, and of importance, Yoruba lineage. In those days, the national diploma classes were not situated, or the ND classes generally were not situated in the main building because the, the building just have one floor. And then you have the studio for each ND students there. The ND classes, ND1 classes, were behind the clinic near the library, while the ND2 classes were around the works and services. It's only when you have light drawing that you get to enter the prestigious art and design department. I said that was not enough. During one of our drawing classes, we saw a man in a white French suit, conductor as we used to call it then. Walk past the corridor into the departmental secretary's office. Then came the second shock of my life. He was the head of the department. Lo and behold, he was Professor Adebayo Yusuf Cameron Grillo. I said to wonder what kind of man is this. I never thought an artist, a painter for emphasis, can be neatly dressed with that splash of paint on his body. Grillo professional body, um, journey. Although most of this constant at this gathering have so much to say about Yusuf Grillo. Grillo is one of the most documented artists of his era. But for brevity, Yusuf Adebayo Cameron Grillo was born in the cosmopolitan Brazilian quarters on Lagos Island on the 16th December 1934. From birth, he was exposed to Brazilian art forms which was exhibited in the architecture. Signally, cornice, fringes, mollies, which was carefully made by bricklayers. He must have seen artisans working when he was young, which must have subconscious fueled his creative life. Growing up and schooling, he acquired some artistic training from the doyen of modern Nigerian art, and Onobulu, and also had some stints with some artists in Lagos in the likes of Akinlala Shekon and J.K. Oye. All this influenced him to shape his career before proceeding to the Nigerian College of Arts and Science, now Amadou Bello University. While in the college, he was one of the first students labeled as Zarian rebels because their kind of artistic expression. The other three were the Masunwoko, Kustal was after the knock art, Uchi Okeke 
who was using the holy body of the Igbos as his means of expression, and Bruce on our prayer, the erudite printmaker. Today, Drilo was able to create a niche or style for himself with a kind of painting different from the standard oriented thought by Western based art schools. His use of linear geographic elongated forms, similar to the Yoruba traditional wood covers exhibited in Ekpa and Erebeji. His rather formal education helping his canon to slightly deviate from the traditional covers. Police and power play. One of the great assets that happened to modern Nigerian art was Yusuf Alibai or Cameron Grillo. As if Providence knew ahead of time, he was one of the survivors of the Lalupon train disaster of 1957 that claimed the lives of his other classmates at the Nigerian College of Arts, Science, and Technology, Zaria, now Amadou Blue University, Zaria, leaving him as the only student in his class. The accident was documented by Papa Shui painting on display at the Tafa Gallery at the Adeni Jones, Lagos. I saw him when I was there. Right from his days in Amadou Bello, Grillo has been into politics, being the secretary of the student association formed in the Nigerian College of Art and Science. The club that was formed have a way of exhibiting their own drawings. Um, which was not in conformity with what lecturers who are predominantly Europeans taught them. On graduation, Drillo was employed by the Federal Ministry of Education and was deployed to the Yaba Technical Institute where he worked with Paul Mount, training young generations of artists from ministries, companies, and private individuals that GN for Salicate to for upward movements in their workplaces. Some of these notable products were late Erabo Emokwai, Sir Victor Wafo, and Abayo Mbaba to mention a few. When Paul Mont left Nigeria, Grillo became the head of the department. Later, the institution was upgraded to a higher status to award students with other national diploma and higher national diploma. Professor Grillo, in conjunction with Papa Agbabiaka, another Zarian product, developed the curriculum for both the ordinary and higher national diploma for the arts and printing department, which was later became the template used in all the polytechnics in Nigeria. In 1975, with the mass retirement of many top level officers, Grillo was appointed as the acting registrar for the college. This must have been a high regard for his astute track record as an administrator. In 1981, the department was upgraded to a school of art, design, printing, Grillo as the director. In 1964, Grillo was one of the founding fathers of the Society of Nigerian Artists and was the shattered secretary, a post he occupied for more than a decade before passing the baton to Professor Wangoje. His influence in the society and artistic sector and in great respect and direct access to the Minister of Information and Culture, Antony Nahoro. He was the president of society, enjoyed direct access to the Dan Barak seats of the military head of state that funded, that the fund used at the art sector of Festa 77 was the boss under his influence
through Yaba College of Tech. The society was fully in charge of the artistic sector during the first act. The society collected, evaluated, and paid the artists whose works were collected. Finding his feet at the college and international scene, he was appointed United Nations Commissioner for Cultural Property in Africa for International Society of educated, uh, Education Through Art. This paper would not have been complete without mentioning the fact that one, as one entire Yaba College of Technology, you think that the only cost was art. As doing work, works are, I mean, where in every nook and cranny of the college, students with their issues are seen everywhere, painting, drawing, the landscape of the college. In natural fact, if you study art in Yaba until recently, I don't know if they still do it, it is money for you to draw or paint the Presbyterian Church at Yaba, the National Theater, and many other notable landmarks in Lagos Metropolis. Students draw and paint on the site with their issues, which is an attraction seeking to the general public. Progregulo was quoted to have used this as a powerful advertising tool for the department with the daily engagement of art with the public. It was easy to drive home the need for more space to accommodate the teaming population of the departmental school. So when funds came for the government, Gilo was, who was at that time the vice rector, Providence has again positioned him to swing the ball for the direction of the art complex. In conclusion, Grillo as a non-conformist to his European lecturers' expectation, as it is said in his first, to be the first departure from follow, follow, like fella will have said, follow, 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 follow. So, you they follow, you block eye. You they follow, you close your ears. But Grillo was not like that. The monumental contribution of Grillo to art in Yaba College of Technology was unprecedented, not only to the art community, but the college at large. Going by the general belief in Nigeria, funds were released for promoting science and engineering. But for art to be at the center stage of government spending, to erect that Ganjati building called the Grillo um, Pavilion there, you will know that this man must have been politicking seriously. Incidentally, at the time that thing was being um, built, the rector of the Polytech of Yaba College of Tech was an accountant, and I'm sure he would have loved to build his own because the only building that was standing in Yaba Tech then was the engineering block. And if you know Yaba Tech very well, you know that the two are not the same. The art block in, a, in aesthetics, in beauty and functionality is way, way ahead of the engineering block. So when money came, I am sure the director then, that's uh, Mr. G.M. Okufi, would have loved to build the management where he came from. Another thing I want to stress here is that Grillo, great vision for the grandeur masterpiece building, Edifix, was found in no other place in Nigeria. Even up to now, most art schools 
are struggling to have a space. I am not condemning or comparing anybody. I happen to be a student at a university where the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, we are all artists. And it never dawned on them to have a structure, even a small building, where they were building for other faculties, faculty of law, faculty of medicine, faculty of this. But up till now, the art department do not have a structure of its own. And the two heads, and not now that there's no money or there are protocols for spending money. It was at a time when the school was building these new faculties, but art was omitted. Let me conclude by celebrating the vision of Grillo that moved the School of Art, Design, and Printing from a one-story building. I don't know, uh, that's, that's where the, we started from, in Yabatek. It was a single block, and then from there we moved to this one. It was later, Padre Lo, make sure it became a two-story building. It, it used to be just one, one floor. While I was there, it was after we left that they had the additional block on top. And then moving from there to this particular new building, you will know that the man had a vision. He had an insight and his unprecedented recommendation. Borrowing a leaf from the live style. I want to encourage artists to go beyond their studio practice into mainstream administration so as to let the largesse at the of the central government tickle down to the art community. And we shouldn't, Yoruba will say, for those of us who do not speak Yoruba, I will try to translate. Cut it well. Divide equally. It is only when you are there. For the artists to enjoy all of us, especially the young ones coming behind us, let us go beyond the studio. We love locking ourselves up in the studio. Let's get out and be in the mainstream like Pagrillo has done. May the soul of Yusuf Adebayo, Cameron Grillo, continue to rest in place. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Pam, for that scholarly paper on Yusuf Grillo, politics and power play in Nigerian arts. Um, because of our time, we move straight to the next paper by um, Professor Dele Jegede. It's going to be delivered live via Zoom. Dele Jegede. All right. Again, the cardinal objective of this conference is to stage a world class conference with in depth discourse. Well, I, I guess I have to manage the intrusion that continues to disturb my uh, thinking. Let me thank, let me st start by thanking um, Mara and uh, all those who are in the. Grillo Art Limited. 
for this opportunity. And um, to turn the, the Grillo residents into a resource center is a very plausible kind of move that I want to um, applaud. But before I go further, I need to be um, frank by saying that mine is not a paper. I'm not presenting any paper. I'm not uh, interested in rehashing what we already know. And in fact, in the last um, two hours or so, we have listened to very interesting presentations. Um, I would like to, can somebody please these people in the NDA? That will birth a democratic transition from one elected um, to another for the fifth time in the fourth. What I'm interested in moving on today is uh, ideation. I'm interested in us turning this platform to one that begins to look at Grillo in the next century. I appreciate the inputs of um, previous presenters, particularly uh, Papashi, um, whom I very much uh, respect. And in fact, without him and the Ministry of Education in those days, many of us would not have had opportunity of completing our education in Zaria. Um, so to talk about ideation is to be very precise, is to move forward and to begin to look at what exactly are the possibilities of entrenching this particular idea pertaining to deathlessness, the idea of deathlessness, um, immortality, which I'm particularly interested in uh, talking about uh, Yusuf Grillo. Um, I'm interested in, in entrenching his own uh, and, and uh, perpetrating that. And so I come with what I would call the Grillo project. The Grillo project. The aim is to uh, place his name in human consciousness in perpetuity. Uh, we can talk from now till eternity about him. Books have been published, articles written, and I've done my little share of that. But I want, I'm particularly interested in moving Grillo forward. I'm particularly interested in getting to a point where his name becomes synonymous with Nigeria, with Africa, with art, which is what he uh, for. So um, my proposal is that we brainstorm here on ways to consolidate Grillo's work, to perpetuate his presence, to immortalize him, and to globalize and venerate his name. That is what the Grillo project is all about. But first I ask, what was he known for? What was Grillo? What is Grillo known for? Uh, before I add my own ideas, let me also say that, according to Papashi, um, he's a man of peace, love, and goodwill. He himself has said that he is an introvert, and all of us will agree with that. One thing that I have personally observed is that in addition to being very humble, I've never seen him wear any bling bling. He's not the one to glamorize himself. He's a family man, a very religious 
person. And as I have had opportunity to participate in his Swiss slam uh, celebrations, I can now say that it made sense when uh, I understand he established the um, organization of Islamic Christians. And you can see the sense of humor there. But what was he known for? For art, for art education, for leadership, humility, inclusiveness, and religious. So um, to be very brief, what I would, what I'm put, uh, proposing here is that the GILO project uh, be realized through the establishment of an endowment for persuasion. Um, and, and those who are in the know would recognize that that would be the foundation for moving forward on the ideas that I'm here proposing. Um, and the goal is to raise over a specified period, say a five-year period, the sum of six million dollars, six million US dollars, or roughly uh, 2.5 billion naira over a specified period, either three or five year period. Um, if you thought that I was daydreaming, uh, you might be right. But that is the platform, that is the conditions that always allow people to do what ordinarily would have been considered impossible or unattainable. So, I am proposing that um, Grillo Incorporated or the uh, Grillo Committee, Grillo Art Limited, um, move to put in place a committee that will include um, quite a number of people uh, reputable bankers, for example, accountants, and public relations experts, um, legal luminaries, community folks, artists, art collectors, news media, uh, members of the family, and those uh, in the diaspora. At least that community uh, could include many more people, but the, the idea is to populate it with um, a diverse array of people with expertise in ways that would allow the project uh, to move forward. And that committee will uh, work out the modalities for accomplishing the goals and objectives and may redesign the goals and objectives without vitiating the overall principle, which is to consolidate Grillo's deathlessness. And so um, briefly I'm proposing uh, a few projects and that, that will be the uh, key presentation that I have. Um, these are preliminary pr uh, proposals, of course, uh, uh, but funding will be derived from interest accruing from the uh, endowment. So um, fundraising becomes quite uh, important in this regard. And so I'm, I'm proposing annual fundraising uh, event to add to the purse. Um, the project will be pitched to several constituencies, organizations, and interest groups, including the Lagos State Government, creative societies, including the SNA, master artists, 
established artists, galleries, collectors, and art aficionados, artists funds, banks, um, particularly the first bank where uh, Grillo had um, several uh, three-dimensional works on display at the Marina Bank. Um, also, Zini Bank, UBA, and several other banks. Um, there are 23 commercial banks in Nigeria. And so we have a, a whole a list to go through. Um, also make the pitch to notable personalities, uh, political or politicians. I have in mind, for example, the politician um, Femi Bajabi Abila, and everybody recognizes him. But in his capacity, as uh, somebody representing, I think it's the civil area, area but at least Lagos, um, he should be contacted, in my own opinion. Of course, the governor, whosoever that governor of Lagos State is, currently is in Sanwolu. Um, an appropriate sectors in the Lagos uh, still State um, Service, um, Femi Otedala, for example, Coca-Cola Nigerian Brewers Limited. The list is endless of people to be solicited. And it has to be done professionally. I'm not asking, I'm not suggesting or proposing that somebody pick a phone and, and call a VC. I'm, I'm suggesting that there be um, uh, the community should have its own letter here little things that can be done, and then uh, the chairman and the committee and secretary will do the soliciting. Um, and then exhibitions of sales of artists' work donated, and probably from uh, the Grillo collection. So the idea then is to spread the gospel through meeting with legal state government in particular with a few acts. I think very seriously that if uh, a presentation uh, were to be made to the Lagos State Government, by virtue of the fact that Mr. Grillo is one of the foremost Lagosians, uh, that particular threat can be, excuse me, pursued. Why? To name Lagos State University of Education after Grillo, so that it becomes a Yusuf Badibai of Grillo University of Education. Yes. Two. Name a major street of major streets after Grillo in Ilupeju Association Avenue, for example, through Lere Maryland, Ikeja, or downtown Lagos. Three, contribution, contribution to the five-year 2.5 billion fundraiser from the Lagos State Government. And then four, these are four key ideas that I, I want to uh, put forward. The fourth one is to create a Grillo monument in Ikeja or Oni, of course. So among other things, uh, the committee should establish a Grillo Prize in Visual Art that is worth not less than 250,000 naira for the most productive graduating students in select institutions. Uh, I have five selected right now, suggested um, Zaria, Ife, Benin, Ituka, and Yaba. Um, there are several universities, of course, in Nigeria. Um, and so the they can decide to increase that desire as time goes on. And as funds are made available, um, we have 49 federal universities right now, and uh, uh, 57 state uh, universities and 111 private universities. So there is um, quite a, a whole list of institutions that can be made to join. In other words, 
proceeds from the endow, uh, endowment fund should be used to create what will become, in my opinion, um, the most sought after prize in the department of arts uh, in those institutions that are, are selected, that is uh, Zaria, Ita, Benin, Nikita, and Yaba. Uh, establish, that is item two, establish a Grillo Endowed Chair at Lagos State University of Education in Jalisi and also at College of Technology. Student art competitions at the tertiary level. These are ideas, like I said, I am particularly interested in IDA uh, and in hopefully beginning uh, what might be a movement that would uh, perpetuate uh, the Grillo MOOC into the future so that we would have new stories uh, to add to it and uh, hopefully um, benefit generations uh, yet to come. Thank you. Before we go to the next presentation by Sabi Aino, you are going to be next. Yeah, you will observe that, um, or let me say personally, I find it very heartwarming that uh, Professor Dele Jagede is able to present his paper all the way from the United States of America. But not just that, but for the fathers from his own testimony, he has been with us since the beginning of this session. He stayed on Zoom, started with us, and listened to all the presentation that has been done here today. That is really very heartwarming. And um, I will leave the work to the rapporteur that we have here to bring out the key points. But I just observed as he reminded us of the importance of funding in the Grillo Arts and how we can go about it, try to put, make it into a foundation, and then you know make it bigger than whatever we have imagined. Funding is so key, and we have to keep that in mind. So, Sir Bernard, I know your presentation, sir. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press here present. Well, I'm highly delighted to be one of the discussants this afternoon. Coincidentally, I spent a total of about 50 years together with uh, somebody I can refer to as uh, Daddy, Yusuf Adebayo Cameron Grillo. I'm not going to bore you much with the schools he attended, as he went to primary school at Soso Place, secondary school at Soso Place. He went to the university, Amadebelo University, some of these things are already in the public domain. And of course, it was mentioned earlier in one of the speeches we've had today. But maybe for the benefit of the students amongst us, you never can tell where you need such information or where you need to use such information. I just, in brief, mention what Professor Grillo did, especially when he was at uh, Yaba College of Tech. He was drafted into Yaba College of Tech around 1962. But before then, he was working at King's College, maybe like Mr. Oshinowo, 
what that thing followed briefly before Mr. Paul Mount, who was a major lecturer at the place we call Yaba Technical Institute then. That's the Yaba College of Tech now. He was drafted because of the interest and the skill he found in Professor Gilo. That's to say that before Professor Gilo uh, joined the place, Mr. Paul Mount knew him all the time he was at uh, Zaria. So shortly after he left uh, Zaria in 1961, he was posted by the Federal Ministry of Education who engaged him. Of course, it was very easy to get a job then. So as, almost as soon as he's finishing, he got a job in the Federal Ministry of Education to teach art at King's College. And uh, he hardly spent one year there before Mr. Paul Mount uh, requested him to be posted to Yaba Technical Institute then. On getting there, Professor Gillo showed the stuff with which he was made. He proposed the regulation of existing program in the institution and worked clo closely with uh, Paul Mount, restructuring courses with new prerequisite qualification for UB students. Specifically, they had ND program in mind, which is a two-year program. And the prerequisite to that was supposed to be uh, a West African school certificate. And this was accepted by the governing council of the institution then. So he continued with his work, like we have been told, from that 1962 to 1987, when he retired. During his period, like I earlier mentioned, ND was introduced, and by 1972, HND program was introduced into Yaba College of Tech. I happened to be the second set of the HND uh, students of Yaba College of Tech in 1973. Luckily, I could see one or two members of the pioneering HND program in our midst here this afternoon, Mr. Raul Thompson. So Professor Guillo was actually the head of department and later the director of school for more than 20 years. By 1971, when I joined Yaba College of Tech as a student too, he was the head of department. And he was there, from there he moved, or he was uh, moved to the position of the director of school when the School of Art, Design and Printing was created. He was the first uh, director of school and he headed the school to 1987 when he retired honorably. Let me briefly talk about uh, Professor Gillo's message. In other words, message in some of his works. There are some of his works that have been projected earlier on. These are some of the works I brought for the benefit of those of us who are not familiar with Professor Guillo's style, especially the students, and those of us that are not in the arts here. You will see a lot of distinctive uh, character and probably colors in his style of work. Some of these things I'm going to mention briefly in this paper here before going to my relationship and what is, I stood to benefit during his lifetime. Professor Gillo's uh, works and philosophical meanings. Gillo's painting was, sorry, Gillo's paintings, which I want to discuss today, Theoretically, it can be taken from the post-structuralism, which gives the audience power to be part of the interpretations of the works 
Even the feeling and clarity of the aesthetic object, like the Ibeji, as a look-alike image in his painting, this is because the artist sees the Yoruba culture in transit within the presence of the European culture and continue to worry about the safety of the Yoruba, of the culture, in the face of European culture. His thinking seems to echo the poem of Gabriel Okara, Piano and Drum. Here, drum represents simplified African culture, while the piano, according to Okara, is the concerto representing the complexity and danger of the European culture. This, for me, is the fundamental foundation of uh, Grillo's visual linguistic or narrative. Yusuf Grillo was very sensitive to Yoruba tradition and drew inspiration from the Yoruba culture. He contextualized the symbol of the culture as it appears in his painting as a cultural code in negotiating the, the new place of culture in the traditional period of Yoruba modernity. This one will quickly and easily be noticed in the surface of his uh, canvas. Grillo's paintings and the figures therein is a critical dialectic discourse on the cultural traditional period of the Yorubas. He centered his focus on the sociological changes and status of the womanhood in the Yoruba culture. The colors used are simplified batik colors like the purple, green, and blue, signifying the dialectic discourse of the Yoruba and the Western culture. His paintings are not so much of the te technical finish one will quickly notice in the Yaba school, but deeply seated philosophically concept of the Yoruba nation. The painting seems to signify the artist's worries in the place of the Yoruba culture, in the hybridity of the African and the Western culture that was ongoing in the later 1960s and 1970 in Africa. Grillo's painting's subject matter represents the conceptualized on the Yoruba philosophy as an imagined contemporary or the modernity of Yoruba culture, focusing on the female figure in the face of the new adopted ways of life. One critical effort noticeable in Grillo's works is the attempt to reconcile the Yoruba aesthetic object with the feeling and craft of the Western draftsmanship that he must have acquired from Zaria. This subject reflects both the Yoruba aesthetic objects and the Western drawing skill available in his uh, painting composition to be studied. The, the, the demonstrated attitude and extraordinary reflexive approach to the interactive complexity of Yoruba culture in fusion with the Western civilization his focus on the Yoruba aesthetic objects can be likened to Hans Hems thinking with pure shapes. A thinker, according to uh, Hamsen, a thinker must subtly control the relationship of his concepts to the matter for which they stand. In order to acquire sufficient generality, this concept must transcend the particular aspect of the experiences from which they are taken. But in spite of their abstractness, they must reflect the, reflect the, the relevant features of their reference." Unquote. This remarkable interaction with the past, fusing with the present, is a, te is a testament of the charge of the current flow of modernity of the Yoruba culture and the emerging 
Western ideology. But his methodology of this approach remains personal to Grillo's drawing and painting ability to showcase his critique of this phenomenon. Well, like I've earlier said, I will not want to bore you much about some of these technicalities um, because this can easily be understood make most likely by the uh, people in the arts, particularly creative arts. Now, let me go straight to my 50 years relationship with Professor Grillo. He was the head of the Department of Art and uh, Painting Department, Yaba College of Technology, when I enrolled to study fine art or general art in September 1971. His office was adjacent to our classroom. By construction, we had to pass through our classroom to enter his office. He was forced to see the classroom while going and coming from his uh, office on a daily basis. He therefore does not have much direct dealing or business with the year one class. The tall, fine looking, respected gentleman saw a lot, but pretended not to see much in most cases. When he stopped to ask questions, you just need to convince him that you know what you are going, and he moves on. At about eight weeks into, at about eight weeks of my stay in the college, he called me one afternoon by my name, and I was surprised that he knew my name already. He asked if I could go with him to his house to do some little jobs for him. I quickly agreed because I saw it as a great honor for him to have figured me out and they asked him to come and help him in his studio. And like somebody earlier said, by then we were looking at the HOD, there was no director of school then. We were looking at him like a demigod. So it was a great uh, pleasure for me asking me to come and join or, or come and assist him in his studio. So we both went to his house in his uh, white Ford car, which was one of the biggest car in the campus then. His studio was located in an acre of land in his house, and that's at the Yaba College of Tech staff quarters. There in the studio, he showed me what he wanted me to do for him, basically to help in arranging mosaic tiles using watercolor model design, which he already prepared. He showed me how to go about this, and that was the beginning of a lifelong relationship with the gentle, principled, and highly respected man in the person of Professor Yusuf Grillo. In most cases, I worked alone in the evening after lectures. Usually, in the, uh, I mean, usually he will come again later in the day after I must have gone to my hostel to do some corrections. But he never told me there is a particular place I don't do well all through my working with him. Rather, he will gently come there, rearrange the mosaic ties, and do it the way he thinks it should be. It was purely a sort of apprenticeship program for me. And I was uh, very glad he engaged me. And rather than me paying the apprenticeship, apprenticeship fee, he will pay me with check for me to go and cash and pocket. I had the opportunity to work with him, not only on mosaic ties, but also on stained glass and some relief sculpture. I cannot forget he made clear one afternoon that I need to make sure I get my assignments done. And he didn't say more than that, but I could easily get the message that he is not the type you, you can miss later to say, oh, a lecturer failed you uh, for whatever reason. 
he is indirectly telling me that he is not going to entertain such. So I got the message quickly. I learned a lot in almost uh, four years of my working with Professor Guilu. That was during my ND and my HND program. The great opportunity I received placed me above some of my classmates and the resultant effect was that I was able to do my HND. Immediately, I finished the ND. In other words, I didn't bother to go for the, N N uh, the one year industrial uh, attachment because the general belief or the consensus opinion of the lecturers then that I could be uh, given the opportunity to start right away. In other words, finishing my ND in June and of that same year, I started my HND come September. Professor Gillo was a teacher, an administrator, a mentor, and a liberal father who will allow you as a student or a mentee to make mistakes in whatever form you want to. And he will allow you to do your correction by yourself by just pointing out a few things that will make you know that you are not on the right path. He was mathematical by nature, and that you will find in his approach to life and works. When at home with his children in the early 70s, he was down to act with them, telling them African folk tales and stories with songs. He occasionally teased and joked with his children. His lifestyle in the 70s and thereafter was by far above his colleagues at Yaba College of Technology. He was highly respected among the staff. Most lecturers outside the School of Art did not seem to understand Professor Guillo's nature because he did not have much time to spend with them after, I mean, outside his uh, office hours. You hardly saw Professor Guillo in any other attire than the French suit of color white, cream color occasionally, light gray and light blue. He was actually blessed because he was always on his feet and uh, went about in his best cars. First with the Ford, a luxurious Ford car and later a white Mercedes-Benz car. Prof was the first president of the Society of Nigerian Artists, a position he held from 1963 to 1978. During his tenure, he ensured that the visual art was placed in a place of pride, and artist voice was heard at the national and, and international level. He ensured that the structure and professionalism was put in place to support the national growth and development of the nation. This was clearly noted during fest Festival of Arts, during Festival of Arts and Culture, that's FESTAC 1977. This presentation will not be complete without the acknowledgement of Professor Gillo's great role in ensuring that the current architectural structure or edifice in the School of Art, Design and Printing, Yaba College of Tech, was purely his making in the 80s. This was earlier mentioned to by uh, my, young, my younger brother there. He occasionally hung out with some of his friends and he loved to entertain and feast his friends during the later period. He taught this organization of Islamic Christians, OIC. That was earlier mentioned too. This he did from 1971 that I knew him up to 19, I mean 2021 that he passed away. The only time we missed that was in 2020 uh, during the COVID period. He was an epitome of uh, humility, honesty, and integrity. He was more of a private personality and lover of music of uh, artists like Aruna Ishola, King Sonia Adi, Ebenezer Obey, Shino Peters, 
acapella and some high life music. It was there for me in 1977 when University of Lagos Faculty of Education was in doubt if HND holders will be able to cope with the postgraduate diploma in education, PGDE program. I completed the program with flying colors, thereby opening the doors for subsequent HND holders interested in the program. This was due to the recommendation from Professor Grillo that allowed me in. In all, I'm one of those who I'm all, one of those that sees Professor Yusuf Grillo as a man made larger than his uh, frame, that is, larger than life size, and he was a tower of strength in all aspects of life. He was very rich in all ramifications. He was blessed with children, all now matured, and honorable ladies and gentlemen. Uh, permit me to mention these uh, people, for the benefit of those who are not sure. Moriah happens to be the first born, followed by Bodunri. Goyega was the first uh, boy. Ladi and uh, later Akin came in. Uh, we were all together all the period I was uh, working in their house. So I knew them when some of them were like that. He was equally blessed with a highly devoted wife confident and epitome of, of uh, motherhood. That is Elijah, or late Elijah, Saidat Iabo Grillo, who equally retired honorably from the Lagos State Civil Service and grew to old age before he was called to glory a few years before the husband uh, followed. May their gentle souls rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, B.A. I know. Um, I will allow uh, Balogun to take a few other recognitions and then we'll go on. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we want to quickly recognize the presence of uh, some uh, important dignitaries that just walked into the gathering. Uh, in our midst, we have a very important and uh, an avid art collector. Um, he is chairman, board APSA Nigeria, um, Cabri Nigeria PLC, Secure ID Limited, Pantheon Partners Limited, and he's also an ad advisory, a member, advisory board, YMC Shilom Museum. We're talking about Dr. Uh, Mr. Adidotun Suleiman. Sir, you're welcome. I know, Ms. Su, um, I have my boss here. Uh, he's the Dean, School of Arts, Design and Printing, Yabakle Technology. Welcome, Dr. Ejiolame Pyers. Thank you. We are almost landing up, don't worry. The art talk is why we are here. That is the way I see it. That is why we are here. But we're already running towards the end of it. We will allow our audiovisual people to project to us the presentation by Professor Jerry Buhari. Audiovisual. Yeah, Jerry Buhari is um, an artist, a lecturer, a professor of fine art at the famous Amadebele University area, Nigeria. And um, he's um, written so many papers and uh, has attended conferences all over the world, workshops, and all that that has to do with art. And uh, they are the ones that are holding forth for the likes of Grillo at the Amadou Bello University. Thank you. Audio. I sincerely thank Grillo Art Limited for the privilege given to me to be a part of the first Grillo Memorial Art Talk. It is a recognition that I humbly appreciate and will ever cherish. 
in honor of the memory of this great man. I have deliberately decided to present only my portrait as identity of the voice presentation that I will make. Yusuf Grillo as man, as message, and as myth. The man, the man Yusuf Adebayo, Cameron Grillo, is a personage of imposing physical height. His dark complexion and cool economical facial expression makes him appear like a living ancestor. His deep baritone voice and sonorous laughter echoes the presence of thunder. Yet, this man, who is essentially reserved, attended my first solo show in Lagos at the Italian Cultural Institute Elegu Crescent, Victoria Island on Saturday 18th November 1989. Many who saw him whispered to me that I should consider myself blessed because he hardly attends exhibitions or social events. I was later to visit him at his home in Ikeja in appreciation for his presence to find a man so simple, unassuming, and ordinary. The man Grillo is a teacher, educator, mentor, confidant, and friend to so many across ethno-religious and class divide. I recall how Jimu Akolo, the late Kucho Otoke, Onobra pair, would speak glowingly of this legend, their colleague and friend. I also recall what late Michael Moigi, my friend, and late Rashid Godamasi, and the Chelerant, how they shared with me about the deep respect with which they hold this man, and especially the humanity Grillo shared with them. I can imagine today as we are seated and reflect on this man, the incredible stories all of us would have encountered with this man. Each of us will reflect the musical tapestry and a luminous mosaic of the man. The message. I recall also that in 1996, when the National Gallery of Art, in collaboration with the Department of Fine Arts, Hamadubele University Zaria, began to put together a historic project titled the National Symposium on Nigerian Art, along with a major touring art exhibition that took place in Zaria, Abuja, and Lagos of the works of members of the Zaria Art Society. The exhibition was titled The Zaria Art Society, A New Consciousness. All the members sought direction and leadership from Yusuf Grillo, though, interestingly, he was younger than many of them. I recall how in visiting him to secure his approval for this exhibition, his face became suddenly stone <laughs> where he demanded, among other things, A, the provision of a dedicated delivery vehicle that would ensure a safe and secure movement of their artworks. 
be, he needed an iron cast agreement that the works will return to all the members of the society two weeks after the execution. C. That there will be security provision of all works throughout the duration of the touring exhibition. Of course, this also included the demand that the works should be insured. These requirements set the standards for exhibition agreement between artists and organizers of art projects in this country. Another significant message that we could draw from the professional life of the artist is the few exhibitions he was engaged in and the length of time it takes for him to let his works go out the studio. The message here is that a work of art takes time to mature and that visibility does not define good success in an art career. Today his works continue to be subject of scholarly research and sought after by collectors. What a successful artist in every sense of the word. In one of my many conversations I was privileged to have with him, one comes away feeling intellectually dwarfed by the depth, the height, the width, and the length of his knowledge and wisdom. The singularity of purpose, conviction, and commitment to his art practice is driven by a personal philosophy rooted in solitary life that draws its nourishment and energy from the humanity around him, which today and always we will ever drink from. The myth, fame, famous, these are terms we use for stars, even art and artists. What is fame? Fame is somewhat limited by time and often fades. With Yusuf Grillo, we come across a personality that exudes presence. His physical aura attracts and commands natural presence, attention, and timeless memory. These are some of the essential qualities that mark and make legends and icons. Yusuf Grillo belongs to this category of Homo sapiens. His artistic career oscillates between sketchbooks, maquette, canvases, boards, wood, concrete, and illuminating glasswork. Situated within deep, engaging Yoruba cultural heritage and spiritual repository, the myth becomes our myth and our wonder, yet simple and ordinary, like the five costumes that symbolize this personage. The man, the message, and the myth have finally come together in a triangular mathematical formula that connects us with each other at the bottom and points us all to the creator. I thank you for listening. That was Professor Jerry Buari from Zaria. He actually wanted to be with us.
we have to persuade him to participate virtually, you know, for the security of our nation today. Um, we are going for the final paper to be presented by Dr. Kunle Filan. A round of applause. Shortly, uh, this session will wind up. However, we still have um, room for uh, good new messages, possibly while refreshment is going on. Um, Emmanuel, Dr. Emmanuel Olakule Filani is a Nigerian educator, an art educator, an artist, an administrator. He works, his works are closely identified with the school of thought named Ism. Ism is an art movement that is based on the fusion of the designs, um, particularly from the Ife Art School, the Yoruba. Uh, he has uh, written so many books. Uh, he's an art scholar, an art scholar. Uh, Kule Filani is well respected in the art parlance. And uh, he's here to say his little bit and contribute to uh, this discourse session. Thank you, Kule Filani. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to uh, just acknowledge the presence of very distinguished family members, friends, colleagues, and the um, students of Pa Yufugilo. Because of time, um, uh, uh, you will pardon me you know, from following the regular protocol. Uh, I can understand that the time for the talk shop have dovetailed into the time for the reception. So I will just highlight a few things, uh, hoping that another day we'll be able to do a more fleshy job. Um, within the context of the theme that says uh, you should reload the man, the message, and the myth, I'm looking at something, I'm looking at you should reload the issue of uh, uh, cultural aesthetics and um, identity. I think within the two, we can capture the essence of his creativity. It is said that great artists are not revered only for their genius. They are equally venerated for their positive way of life. And I think, uh, apart from Yusugilo's tangible realities of in the visual arts is typical, is living. The way he lived his life is also typical of um, a person that is worthy of study. The African society, when you make positive contributions to your society and you grow old and die, they often embark on the process of deification, thereby giving you a kind of immortality after death. I believe that um, this um, meeting today is the beginning of the apotheosis to deify our very great uh, father, Yusuf Grillo, and therefore give him immortal life. I'm very pleased with what Professor Dele Jegede enunciated, you know, as to how we could further engender and entrench his name in the sand of time, because he's actually worthy of such um, accolade. 
I will be touching on some issues of identity and artistic creativity. As we all know, there are different types of identity, cultural identity, which could be national, ethnic, even people could say there is global identity. There is personal identity, there is professional identity. You have issues of gender-based that could be classified into identity and issue of social and religious beliefs. All these are encapsulated within the cultural nuances of Jusudilo's um, Uva. As we all know, um, culture is a continuum with overlapping narratives and uh, is often defined by the exigencies of modernity, meaning that there are changing phases of basic indigenous principles and uh, elements, thereby ensuring that culture continues. There's always these tensile strings of um, continuity that bind the past with the present. And uh, for those who are cultural conscious, or when you refer to an artist as cultural conscious, uh, it does not define the artist or the person to be a fossilized um, um, thinker or somebody who is trying to ossify tradition. No, because con culture lives. There is change and continuity. And so when we define you should deal within the context of culture, we must understand that there are um, strings of continuity between the old, present, and probably the future. Um, Yusuf Dilo could be described as an African artist, a Nigerian artist, a Yoruba artist. All these, according to Anyako, is given a conceptual qualification when you qualify somebody with a concept an African artist, a Yoruba artist. That means that there are issues that relate to the person's work and the general uh, qualifier like Yoruba art. Rilo is typically a Yoruba artist in a modern time. And according to Oloidi, he was talking about concepts, notions, and beliefs as a ramifying factor that defines the individual in art. So, if you examine the forms and the content of Yusudilo's work, then you begin to see those elements of culture that made him a typical Yoruba artist within the modernity that we experience today. Um, as an individual who was grounded in cultural aesthetics, he was able to project culture within all the various types of work that he did. And uh, when you examine the theory of natural synthesis that was propounded by the Zaria Art Society members in the, between 1958 and 1961, uh, you will realize that um, what Zaria Society did was to collate ideas that translated the past into the present and which will give hope for the future. And so, some of them who stayed in Nigeria and lived in Nigeria became typical pillars of creativity in contemporary Nigerian art. Yusuf Dilo was one pillar in Lagos, Yabate, that developed the school as many speakers have already mentioned. Uche Okeke, as we know, developed the Osuka school. Bruce Onobrakuya developed the workshop school. And uh, all of them had relationship with their own different cultures. Demasuoko was on his own, and he, he developed a, a very you know, robust tradition, not only in creative art, but also in architecture. And when you look at their individual works, you will see cultural elements manifesting in all the stages of their production. For example, we said Julio was Yoruba, typically Yoruba. 
because some of them was typically Urobo. Uh, the Delta influence in Demasuoko could be seen in his work. And of course, uh, Uche Okeke, who developed the, the concept of tradition in Misuka, was also um, steeped in culture. So, the Zaria society was epoca in the sense that they were looking for identity. Remember that in the late 50s, there was agitation for independence in Nigeria. And indeed, we have had our regions and we have premiers, you know, um, superintending those regions. The Zikist movement, as well as Leopard, uh, Leopold Senghor of Senegal, had already started. All of them were looking, seeking for identity from the grips of colonialism. And you couldn't have been a student in the university as at that period without also sharing similar ideas. So the students questioned the colonial curriculum. And by the time they graduated, they, they allowed themselves to be carried along within the cultural setup that they each belonged. And that's the significance of natural synthesis. That culture, as I mentioned initially, was not fossilized. There was not a notification of tradition in their work, but a progressive and dynamic uh, movement between past and the present. And all this we see in the work of um, our dear father, Yusuf Bilo. Um, let me quickly mention the personal identity that Yusuf Bilo had. He was Yoruba, born in Lagos Island, and of the Brazilian extraction. His ethnic identity was Yoruba, as we have mentioned. And if you look at his work, you will see that there are formal characteristics that typify the Yoruba lifestyle. For example, he is known for stylized nationalism. And if you look closely at his work, you will see that it echoes the traditional Yoruba carvings and elongated in his paintings in order to create a more you know, uh, dynamic uh, movement. He had mask life faces. He depicts mask, I mean, the faces in mask life fashion, both con uh, concave and, and convex, uh, looking like those of um, the Egba Gelede or even the Egbubu mask in his um, stylized naturalistic paintings. He had mathematical appropriations of his um, surfaces. Of course, if you knew his background, you know that he had advanced level in art and mathematics, and he was able to use this, you know, to to ape, I mean, sorry, to add to the quality of his work. His color mutations, where you have cool, calm colors, morphs of different type, were also derived from the Yoruba you know, tradition, which is peculiar to in some places in Yoruba land. Then the sartorial elegance of his paintings, or rather of his works, especially his paintings, could be found in the Yoruba women, Yoruba dresses, which are quite grandiose, you know, beautiful, and fitting into the elong elongated uh, images that he created. If you look at his content, you also see characteristics of the Yoruba in the, in the content of his work. He explored Yoruba social, religious, and world, uh, worldview. Even in his ecclesiastical interpretation of the Bible, you will see Yoruba forms, Yoruba motifs, and Yoruba symbols, you know, depicted to represent Christian themes. And when you look at the national symbols, and all the commissions he did, national commissions. He tried to imbue most of these commissions with Yoruba motifs as decorative motifs or as symbols. Um, the issue of female gender issue, which was also a question of identity. You could see that Grillo highlighted females in his work. He was not a feminist. He was only highlighting femininity 
you know, in art. And you could see that he, was, he brought out the salient elegance and the social uh, ambience of female gender in his works. I go to his professional accomplishments. Mr. Glow was a great teacher. He was a great administrator, I had already said by many people, especially as he displayed it in Yaba College of Technology, Lagos. Um, he was one of those few individuals that wasn't even a rector in the institution, but that big edifice of um, the, the industrial, art and industrial um, building was dedicated to him. And so you have uh, Yusufilo Industrial Art and in, uh, Art and Industrial Edifice, which is very unique. He was president of Society of Nigerian Artists. He was uh, one of the pillars of excellence in creativity, in contemporary creativity, as I mentioned earlier. He was a very well sought after in creative circles. People pay for the work he had not done. And he had job satisfaction. And to the glory of God, he was rewarded, you know, financially for his sweat in creativity. Um, and he also had impressive bibliographies. Books had been written about him, articles in journals all over the world, and, and these are quite um, interesting things for him to get. In his personal life, he was savvy and creative, brilliant man who was able to combine art and mathematical calculations to do unique things. He was a cool and calm individual, as already noted very quiet, you know, almost introvert. He was not interested in vain glory and mundane bragging rights. He would not join issues with anybody to claim suzerainty or superiority about, you know, about his position in art. And this is quite interesting. You know, he said he does not celebrate what he didn't make. He could only celebrate what he contributed to. That's why he didn't believe in bad days. He's a deep-seated individual. If you ever had a discussion with him, he's very philosophical in his worldview. His huge monumental stature, you know, and comely look does not make him to be arrogant. Of course, there are individuals who felt that his quietness, his recluse um, style of living was a form of arrogance. No, if you ever met um, Baba Grillo, you will know how warm, how you know, affectionate he could be to whoever he met. I'm, I'm stopping here by saying that um, I congratulate the family for, for starting this one year anniversary. And I believe that it will encourage us to process further how to immortalize his name because he truly deserves it. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the scholar. Just um, as the lecture was going on, uh, we have um, another visitation by one very important person that we have to mention here. Uh, we have uh, our own Egbon, Daddy, Mr. Olusegun Olusanya, a retired seasoned banker, a former director, Union Bank Nigeria, PLC. Da Please clap if you want to clap. I won't charge you for clapping. <laughs> director, Benway Cement Company, and the vice chairman, Maristan uh, Securities. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. Uh, quickly, um, 
right now, as refreshment is going on, the rector, Yaba College of Technology, ably represented by the deputy rector, academics, would actually want to have um, a chat with us on, on this session before the random. Dr. Titi Layo Okamba, Mrs. Good afternoon. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm representing Director Yaba College of Technology, Engineer Obapemi Omokube, who has directed that I should give a goodwill message on his behalf. We really want to appreciate the family for organizing this first uh, memorial lecture in honor of our pa, Professor Grillo, Oyaba College of Tech. Pa Grillo lives on. And for everyone here present, he has touched us our lives in one way or the other. And we have, he, he, he has directed us and we are good for it today. For Yaba College of Technology, the message of Pagrillo is, can be summarized in the following ways. Hard work, excellence, a coach, a mentor, and he has been a wonderful educator par excellence. Because when you have someone to take over from you, then you know you have actually achieved. So we want to appreciate the family once again, and we want the legacy to continue. I also want to assure you that for Yaba College of Technology, Pa Grillo lives on. God bless you. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Bon appetit. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tilayo Okamba. I they call and say, I they call and like saying, I did there when that name was. <laughs> uh, it is time for, we are still on good messages. Uh, we have very important collector in our midst. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, you'll be amazed at this man's collection. And uh, today we are proud to have a private. Um, duly founded by this man. Anyway, let me not just uh, get into all that. Omoba, um, is here. Of course, uh, he has collected Grillo several times and over. And he, I'm sure he would want to make a remark. He didn't tell me he would do, but I know he will. <laughs> okay. Well, distinguished gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm here, I'm here not to add to what has been said, but to mention something very important. We are all going to live and die. It's not about the positions we held. It's not about the money we made that the world will remember us for. It is how meaningfully we lived our lives. The School of Positive Psychology emphasizes the importance of living a life to leave an impact and provide happiness for others in the process of doing so. Professor Grillo has done that. I am just a mere collector. I'm not an artist. We should all ask ourselves in all the life in the lives we live, how much are we impacting society? How much happiness are we leaving behind? What role are we playing in the lives of others? beyond our nuclear family. 
That is what the world will remember us for. It is not how many vehicles you own. It's not how many positions you've held. It is how you use those positions to impact the lives of others. While I listen to all the summar uh, summaries about the schools Professor Grillo attended and so on and so forth, I kept asking myself, how well did Professor Grillo impact the lives of others? That is what determines the meaningfulness of our lives. For artists, a, a good artist never dies. He never dies because he leaves his mark behind after death. Professor Grillo was known for stained glass. His work left meaningful impact in stained glass. His stained glass can be found in many churches in, in Nigeria. St. Saviour's Church in Rescourse here has the works of Professor Grillo. St. Leo's Church in, um, in, the, in the mainland and many other places like that have the works of Grillo. And indeed, if you go around the world, you find that these are ways by which artists have left their legacies many years after they died, how they've impacted society. Professor Grillo did that. His stained glass are uh, noted in many churches in Nigeria, and he also trained a lot of artists to do the same. So they have, he transferred his talent, his skill, selflessly in growing others to do what he... So you find there are new crops of artists that Professor Grillo has impacted their lives, and therefore he has lived a meaningful life. With sculptures, Professor Grillo impacted the lives of many sculptures. One of them is Taiwo Uyi. If you look at the works of Taiwo Uyi, you will see Grillo in them. Again, there is one great artist present here that just told me privately how in the latter part of Professor Grillo's life, he asked this young artist that he never trained, but who went to Yaba Tech, that Professor Grillo was always referring his clients to go to him, to go and modify some of the works he has done. For instance, the work of um, uh, in, in Idumata, Eyo in Idumata, was done by Professor Grillo, but when it needed refurbishment, he referred this artist, he referred the uh, Lagos State government to get in touch with this artist. That is the way to live a meaningful life, to help others, to transfer whatever you have into others that are coming behind. There are sculptures like Symbol of Justice, Shokoti at Yomoloja, at the Commerce House in, um, around here, so yeah, and so on and so forth. These are sculptures. Also paintings. I am one of the beneficiaries of Professor Grillo's um, paintings. And if you go to the Yemisi Shilom Museum of Art in Ibejuleki, you find some of Professor Grillo's paintings that I have given out to the museum. I don't want to hold them because I have a finite period on art. I am going to go. Holding them will not pay me. Collectors in Nigeria have been known to collect artworks, and when they die, those artworks become useless. They are either sold by family members that didn't know how you collected it, and so on and so forth. But 
Professor Grillo's work are there at the Yemisichina Museum of Art. Of course, I must say, I'm being assisted by great minds, like my brother that is around here, uh, Dr. Suleiman. I thank you very much publicly for what you are doing for us. There is also his role in SNE. Professor Grillo was one of those who founded SNE. But what has artists done for him? We are going to go into that later. Nigerian artists, wake up. It is one thing for you to be saying, Professor Grillo helped you to find found SNE. Socrates said, gratitude is one of the attributes of nobleness. To what extent has artists been grateful for what Professor Yusuf Grillo has done for them? Of course, this brings me to the annual Grillo Festival that Nigerian artists enjoyed with Rashid Baramosi for many years. That man died in 2018, Chief Rashid Baramosi. I, we were all guests of Chief Rashid Bamosi in Ikurudu. He spent millions of naira every year to host artists. What have Nigerian artists done to remember a man like that? What have Nigerian artists done to remember Samuel Agbaju, whom he and I and Chief Rashid Banawasi set up Vason, Visual Art of Nigeria. What have we done? Nigerian artists, it's not good enough to just say, you have collectors. Recognize your collectors. Recognize your collectors and give your collectors some prominence. The industry of art is made of both the producer and the consumer. The consumers are your collectors. What have you done to immortalize the, your collectors? Mike Odua was a major collector. What have Nigerian artists done to remember him? Samuel, Samuel Agbaji was a major collector. What have Nigerian artists done for them, for him? Rashid Baramosi. I can go on and on. Please, this is something that is food for thought for Nigerian artists. But yes, Yusuf Grillo was one of those who formed SNE. Nigerian artists, wake up and find a way by which you can help those who are building artists and those who are collecting your work. For instance, I expected to come here today this hall is just like you are celebrating ordinary thing. I expect Nigerian artists to come with their works. I should be sitting here with artworks around me. And Professor Jegede mentioned the issue about raising an endowment. One of the ways you can raise endowment for Yusuf Grillo, the Nigerian artists should bring their works and donate it for a function like this, art collectors to buy those works. And then you build funds for the endowment. Let us look at how to be creative and not do things the way others are, have been doing it. Artists should not forget their benefactors. We should remember that life it has, is finite. Our lives are finite. And of course, on a parting gift, I want to say that gratitude is one of the attributes of noble souls. Nigeria artists, show gratitude to your collectors. Show gratitude. Don't just see collectors as people you just go to buy art, buy my artwork, buy my artwork. Remember that without collectors, there won't be artists. Uh, my, own, my final comment is to say, we thank the family of Yusuf Grillo we thank the friends of Yusuf Grillo. We thank the collectors that are here for remembering this great man. 
I was, I was a member of those, I was one of those who used to attend number 28 to Gulawa. Anytime uh, Yusuf Grillo did his annual get together for everybody, uh, he would send me the invitation with their Chrislam uh, notice, and I used to attend. I, I mean, I can remember now with some, with some um, pain how he, uh, we lost him about a year ago. May his legacies, may Yusuf legacy live, continue to live with the, with the living forever. Thank you very much. Goodwill messages. Daddy, you want to say something? Goodwill message. Any other? SNA chairman. All protocols observed. I am humbled to find myself in such an enlightened company. I know practically nothing about arts, but I have had the privilege of being in the company of famous successful and wonderful practitioners in that line. For the benefit of those who may not know, and I'm no, I know that a majority of you will be wondering where has this one come from. My family name is Ajayi. And I have had the privilege of association with a number of Nigerian artists. I think my relationship with the late Professor Grillo will be a little bit in excess of six decades. So I have seen and associated with him for quite a long while. I will not dwell on his qualities because all that has been done. And what is delightful about it is that the consistency is to emphasize his excellence. But I would want to make one or two observations. Professor Grillo is an example of the quality of Nigerians that Nigeria needs very much now. He's a very conscientious and ardent Muslim, that you know. But what I also know is that quite unlike those of us who group ourselves into sections of I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim kind of thing, Professor Grillo has very good knowledge of either the Muslim life or the Christian life. 
And I want to, with, with, with no offense to modesty, that is, I've spent a long time with him. The two of us have always been discussing religion. That is, if I want to know anything more about the Muslim religion, I will have a chat with him and he will update me and vice versa. In case you don't know, the man is very vast also in the Bible. And one thing that is wonderful about him is that he's not a particularly demonstrative somebody. To my mind, very quiet fellow. To my mind, very modest fellow. To my mind, very brilliant intellectual. Because every time you look at that man, I don't know about you, you see an aura of peace around him. Not very, not noisy, not rough, soft-spoken, pleasant. The lesson from that place is for us to know as Nigerians that we are merely using excuse of religious differences to ruin this country. I am satisfied with one thing. There is only one God, regardless of what your religion is. And there are substantial, a number of things common in whatever religion you want to tell me about. My plea is that we should take the opportunity of the example of Professor Grillo and straighten this country and not hide beyond, uh, behind religious titles to ruin this country. There's only one God, and there's only one God who has created all of us, like Professor Grillo did in his lifetime. Let us seriously think of the, think of setting Nigeria on a proper path, take away the bitterness created by us, imaginary bitterness of I belong in this camp or I belong in that camp. Professor Grillo has demonstrated this fact. We are all children of God. Let us pull together as a people and let us be realistic that human beings are human beings regardless of what side of the religious curtain they belong. Let us get together and use the memory of people like Professor Grillo to improve this country to make relationships more stable and to dispense with the idea of that cover of I belong in this, on this side or on that side. God has created all of us to make the best of our stay on this planet just like Professor Grillo has done so that in the final day of judgment, we'll be able to justify the privilege that God has given us to exist on this planet. Thank you very much. So much, sir. Please, a round of applause for our father. I know you are you are refreshing yourself. Um, why? Um, soon as we just um, sorry, daddy. Um, can we usher the high table to this table so that they can actually be refreshed, please? Uh, let's usher this table. This exalted high podium. Um, we just want um, that, but. Before we round up, I just want us to, before the, um, the vote of thanks, I will still have some good messages coming. Um, I would um, please plead with um, the Vanguard newspaper if you are here, the Nation newspaper if you are here, NAN, News Agency of Nigeria, TVC representative, this day, to please signify and see myself and Boega uh, at, at the recording place there. The Vanguard, Nation, NAN, TVC, this day. They are the uh, journalists that we have in our midst. So please, at the end there, try as much as possible to see us. Um, myself and uh, Boyega Grillo will be waiting for you. Uh, while that is going on, um, architect Olumide would actually want to give us some um, Something for 
another talk. Um, the food for thought from our architect. Uh, sir, you are welcome to, to handle the talking stick. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be failing in, uh, in many ways if I don't get up to do this acknowledgement. And that's why I have um, asked that the uh, person in charge of proceedings to please allow me to make a comment or two. I have been very fortunate to find myself as somebody who studied under two distinguished personalities we are talking about here. I want to allow him settle down so he can hear it properly. But Chief T.A. Fashuyi was my art he was my art teacher at King's College. He started me at started me out in King's College from Form One in art and I became consumed in my art. I got very good and I must tell you how determined he was for me to be a good artist. Just a small story. I think in Form 2, I did from him a, a landscape. We weren't many doing art, maybe about three or four of us. I did a landscape for him. And I thought I had done a very good job. Mr. Fashui came to me, looked at the art, and he took it from my easel and ripped it apart. He ripped it apart into pieces. And he told me, is that what you see of the sun? Did you see the sun looking so weak? You are in Africa here. The sun is very vibrant. Don't ever draw for me what you think you have seen in books. This is not a European atmosphere. Start all over again. He turned me into an African artist. And I have that privilege that it grew up with me. Well, he left the school and later on, I kept going. I was passed on to Professor Grillo. Professor Grillo groomed me for my HSC and I finished very, very well with an A. He prepared me for a career in art. I didn't carry on with art, which was my first love, and I ended up going to study engineering. But eventually, the art in me took me into architecture, and I finished as an architect. But my major contribution today, which I wish all of you artists carry away, is that I would like to see A school of architects grow out of the Abba College of Technology School of Art. I'm not sure if you heard me right. Architecture belongs in Nigeria in the schools of art. The, mathemat the mathematicians have almost stolen it away from the artistic realm. It should be brought back into art. That is why a lot of our buildings, a lot of our atmospheres in the country are devoid of genuine African art. We just place architecture, we just place art as a symbol here and there within the built environment. We are not allowing the built environment to come up creatively out of our art. We should be seeing our various passion 
that we have everywhere in our clothes, in our appearances, in our surroundings, in our various features. We should be seeing those things in our architecture. So the architects that we are grooming in the country are devoid of our artistic instincts. And then we finish up and start to look for artists to put one thing in this corner or that corner and so on and so forth. Please, those who have opportunities to do things about this, and I was hoping that the deputy rector will still be around to hear me, but those of you who have the muscles, please try to get to pass that B. I know that if Yaba College of Tech starts it, then you will start to have more of this interaction across the country. Thank you. Thank you so very much, sir. Our take home is full of art. Try as much as possible to put up that proposal, particularly in Yaba Tech. As a matter of fact, in about two centuries ago, architecture was actually part of fine art, was actually part of art. But somehow, somewhere, we lost it to engineering. Uh, we are having a proposal now that it will be brought back. Thank you so very much, Ma. Um, again, Society of Nigerian Artists Chairman. Okay. Society of Nigerian Artists Chairman, please come and uh, engage us. Journalists from this, this day, nation, CVC and um, Vanguard, please try as much as possible to see us at the back there after your refreshment. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Exactly one year ago, in this same hall, I did say something. I said, art and the artists, they live forever. And last year, I did, I said, Baba Grillo is still alive. Because so far we have his works hanging in people's home. So far we have his work adorning public spaces. So far, we have his name being mentioned by people. That means that he is still alive. And let me use this opportunity to congratulate the children and the entire family and the art community here for keeping the memory of Professor Yusuf Grillo alive. And from all that have been said since morning to this time, there is one simple lesson that every one of us should draw from the legacy of Grillo. And what is that legacy? Those people that you have encounter with, what is your contribution to their life? It is easy and easier to, to say this or to say that. But what do we want anybody to say about us after we must have left? Life is very, very short. As they say, art is a very long journey. So it is a journey that is going to lead us to the point of no return. And when we get to that point, what do we want people to say about us? Once again, I congratulate the organizers of this event, the Yaba Tech School, and all the people who participated in bringing this event together. I say thank you. And to the family of Professor Grillo, I pray that God in his infinite mercy will grant Professor Grillo eternal rest. Amen.
That is um, the chairman, Society of Nigerian Artists, Lagos Chapter. Thank you very much for putting that word to us. Um, we are gradually coasting home. We wouldn't know whether there is anybody around that still want to say one or two things before we have the vote of thanks. Yeah, I think uh, we'd like to hear the voice of uh, uh, the Dean of <coughs> School of Art, Dr. Pius Ejiolame, to say one or two things. Good afternoon, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be part of this uh, gathering. I know my elders have spoken, and I don't think I have uh, much to say. I just want to thank the family for the idea and the thought process of organizing discourse. I really want to encourage the family that this should not be the first and the last, but it should be the beginning of the beginning. On that note, I want to thank um, everyone that is here present, though I'm not to give the vote of thanks. But I need to appreciate everyone that is here uh, for gracing this occasion. Uh, thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much for that short remark. I think uh, with that, we're sealing it for responses from our guests here. I know we are all busy with our uh, forks and spoons. At this stage, we expect the vote of thanks to, to follow. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, my fathers, the various uncles around, all the protocols observed. <sighs> if you have too much to say, the only thing that can be said is thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the depths of our hearts. My siblings and I have been totally, totally humbled by the Lord, by all the support from everybody, not just for this event, but from the time my father passed on. You have stood with us, you have been so wonderful. In fact, we, we wondered if we actually lived all the while. 
with the living God. We just thank you for your love. I would actually kneel down if I knew that I could get up from the grave. But please, my fathers, I share your duty. God bless you. God will indeed prosper you all for us. We thank you and we are indeed blessed to have you. Thank you for the time here with us today. Thank you for all the wonderful things that we've heard today about my dad. The man was indeed exceptional. And we can only hope that each and every one of us will still be celebrated when we die. We should celebrate each other while alive and still celebrate each other. God bless you all. I wish you all journey mercies as you go back. I pray that each and every one of you will be willing to accept our invitation for subsequent events that we will plan, and especially towards Guido Arts Limited. We will be letting you know how we want you to be involved. God bless you, and my siblings and I will say, I do pray. God bless you.